All right, everybody. So we're going to uh, play a little game called House of Danger. It's a choose-your-own-adventure game. Um, so yeah, we got a very small crew tonight. I'm joined by... Okay, he's got food in his mouth. You go first. Sonia. Nick. Barn! All right, so... Um, what? How, how do we play the game, Nick? All right, so this is just a basic card game where we tell stories, and uh, on the second page of the card, it tells you what to do. So if you guys want to go to... Have you ever read the books where you'll be like, well, I will go to a mansion, and uh, page 17, I go up the driveway, page 14, I go along the brick wall. Something like that. So that's pretty much what this is. Same concept as the stories in the books. We have clue cards, and we have adventure cards. We have... a we have a little board called with the psychic scale on it and the danger scale and goals and stuff like that. And we have a six-sided dice. And that's it. So let's start. Sounds easy. Okay, let's do it. So in the beginning, you guys have two minutes to look at this picture and discuss everything that you guys see on it. And discuss. I think it, looks like a spider web. it does look like a spider web. And there's a sword in the middle. So that's got to mean something, right? And the the swirly. Are we we're supposed to be discussing what this picture looks like. We have two minutes. It's uh, Frog Prince. Think so? Yeah, mixed with a little Excalibur. Yeah. And uh, it's Fine. Charlotte's Web, the Ghostbusters, skin. and High School. Looks like a biodome right there. In the back, some kind of building. It's ice. There is a block of ice. Yep. And there's a kitchen. There's garbage. There's a lot of garbage. Looks like lockers on the walls. Oh, and that maid. First, I thought that was somebody in a breastplate, but I think that's an old maid. Okay. What's down at the bottom? Why is the sword jizzing? That's a frog. There's a picture on the wall. What is it of? I don't know. There's slime coming out of the lockers, though. Cloudy. The cloudy day. Okay. I think we're good. Chapter 1. The Grounds. It's a Tuesday morning in late June, and you wake up in a cold sweat. The nightmares came again last night. Even though you are an aspiring detective and psychic investigator, you haven't been able to make sense of the haunting dreams that you've had the past few weeks. In your dreams, you keep seeing the same spooky house. You're still shivering under the covers when you hear the phone ring downstairs in your basement, where you have your combination office and research library. You dash down the lab to answer. I need. I need. A weak voice says when you pick up the receiver, I need your help. You hear a loud click and the phone goes dead. But you were prepared. While your caller was talking, you activated your high-speed telephone tracing device. It instantly is displays that legal. The, it instantly well, it's called caller ID. Apparently, it instantly displays the caller's number five 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 seven two five nine. You call back the number right away, but there's no answer. After consulting the tall stack of reverse phone books behind your desk, you are disappointed to learn the number is unlisted. You sense that the phone call is somehow related to your nightmares. Later, while at the Hedgebrook Police Station, you return a night scope you borrowed from a recent stakeout. You describe the mysterious phone call and your recurring dreams to your friend, Sergeant Morrison. That call does sound strange, he says. We'll look into it. About that house in your dreams, a voice says from the hallway, I wonder if you're dreaming about the Marsden house on the Hedgebrook Road. Detective Murphy sticks his mustache face into the room. Modern house? Ornate gate? That sounds like the Marsden place, all right, says Sergeant Morrison. Strange things are reported to happen out there. Detective Murphy takes a puff of his pipe. That, so that place is haunted, he says. I know it sounds unprofessional, but I've had a file on the Morrison house for years, and I'm sure of it. He waves a folder in front of your eyes, and a phone number written on the front jumps out at you. It matches the one from your mysterious phone call. So the call is related to your nightmares. Your psychic sense were right. Draw clue number 26. Chapter 1 Goal Get inside the Marsden house. Back at home, you grab a bottle of water and your trusty pocket knife, preparing for a new investigation. Half an hour later, you stand before the Marsden residence, which appears exactly as, as it did in your nightmares. The house's futuristic look is strange contrast with the antiquated appearance of the stone wall and wrought iron gate, which is locked shut and wrapped in steel chains. Even though the air is balmy, a chill travels down your spine. The gathering clouds on the horizon hint at a brewing summer thunderstorm. If you search the wall for a way in, go to story card 13. If you climb the gate, go to story card 7. What do you guys do? Would you climb the wall? Yes. Yeah, let's climb the wall. Search the wall or climb the gate. Climb the gate. Climb the gate. <laughs> Sonia's like, I don't, I don't know. Climb the gate. She's already done this. She knows how to do this. <laughs> I know how to do the first chapter, so I gotta be careful. 
You pull yourself over the rusting gate and land with a crunch on the gravel driveway, leading toward the house. But before you can survey your surroundings, you hear a guttural sound coming from your left. You encounter a shadowy, hunched-over figure emerging from the darkened doorway of a decrepit gatehouse. You just barely make out eyes and white fangs dripping with saliva. The figure crouches as if it to spring forward at any moment. Who's there? You stammer. Suddenly, the creature lunges at you, snarling. You spot a guardhouse not far away. If you can get past the creature, you might be able to hide there, or perhaps you would just turn and flee up the driveway towards the main house. Optional challenge. Fight the creature. You fight the creature? Hell yeah, we do. I was going to say run, but I guess we can fight the creature. We're BTS players. We're going to fight the creature. Who's got some roll? So, is the danger meters are on the three? You have to get a three, four, five, three, four, five, or six no. to win. A one or two Way fails. Two. Okay, so you have to get a three, four, five, or six. Mm-hmm. Pretty easy. Okay, four. Yes! Win. Draw clue number ten. Clue number ten. It's probably unwise to engage such a savage beast in combat, but danger is your middle name. You land a few quick jabs on the creature before it can react, and then you throw it to the ground. You stand there for a moment, your confidence high. Then the creature leaps to its feet and rushes you. You manage to win round one, but you're in no hurry to start round two. So you race for the shadows where the creature can get his hands on you. Draw clue 25. I wanted to fight to the death. And the ASPCA will get us. You find a pair of binoculars in the shadows. With the creature on the loose, you can't hide here forever. So you run to the guardhouse. Keep this item. Go to story card 19. You were lucky to escape the creature, but you know it's still out there, somewhere. You run into the old guardhouse, which is a small room with several TV monitors flashing black and white images of various places on the estate grounds. Some monitors are broken, and shards of glass are scattered across the desk and the wood floors. A hefty book called History of Notwin County is lying on the desk. Curiously, you look up the same Marsden Henry in the index. Sure enough, it references an entry on page 93. Your heart races as you turn there to read this bio. Henry Marsden, born 1839, died 1887, general in the Union Army during the Civil War, severely wounded at the Battle of Shiloh in 1862, appointed warden of the Hedgebrooks Prison of 1880, rumored to have been killed in the prison riot fire of 1887. Not a popular guy, you think. The desk has three drawers. Maybe there's something useful inside. A wooden ladder leads up to the rest of the roof. There's a window filled with cobwebs. You can see an open field that leads to the manor's front door. You consider what to do next. Optional challenge. Search the desk drawers. I want to search the desk drawers. I want to search desk drawers. I think we're searching the desk drawers. Okay, same as before. Okay. Oh, oh, fuck you, you dice. Suck. Lose. You slap that your is a ball one. sack in the drawer. Raise danger meter by one. Because you're also pounding off your fear boner. If you climb the ladder to the hatch in the roof, go to story card 27. If you crawl through the window and run for the front door of the house, go to story card 3. We're going to do the window? Oh, we go to the roof. Okay. I distracted you all. Yeah, we can go to the roof. You scramble up the ladder, through the hatch, and onto the guardhouse decaying tile roof. It seems to be on the verge of collapsing, but you find a spot that you were reasonably sure won't cave in when you put your weight on it. Across the dangerously unstable roof from where you crouch uneasily, you can see a pile of construction materials, probably left over by contractors working on the roof. Among the material is a first aid kit, but navigating the length of the roof to reach it will be perilous. One wrong step and you could stumble off the roof into a ditch you see below. Near you is a thick vine that you could climb down and reach the courtyard, and not too far from you is a long board someone has laid between the roof and the nearby greenhouse, which seems to be sturdier than the guardhouse. Optional challenge. Get the first aid kit. We want the first aid kit. Want the first aid kit. Wait, are we hit, hurt? No. Why do we need the first aid kit? Just Mm -hmm. in case. Alright, I'm going for it. (laughs) Oh, yeah! Uh, uh, uh. I succeeded. Draw clue number six. Number six. Got the first aid kit. You want to read it? Nice. The first aid kit is fully stocked. The way things are going, you're sure to need it. Discard it any time to lower danger meter by four. If you cross into the greenhouse, go to story card 29. If you climb down the vine, go to story card 14. The vine or run like a bitch? Run like a bitch or climb the vine. Go to the greenhouse or go across the vine or down the vine. I think we should go to the greenhouse. I don't care where we go as long as we use the vines. 
Let's go down the vine. You climb down the gnarled vine into a walled courtyard beside an outbuilding that appears to be the servants' quarters. The door is slightly ajar, but you are unsure if anyone is inside. In the courtyard, there is a small table with a cigar box sitting on top of it. There is also a path that leads to the courtyard and up to the side of the mansion. Free action. To check out what's in the cigar box, draw clue 15. It's a flashlight. Flashlight? A flashlight. <laughs> We're going to use it. The cigar box contains a flashlight. You check and discover that flashlight. it has no batteries. It has no batteries. Discard any battery to automatically win the game. Ooh, perception challenge. Sorry. If you approach the door to the servants' quarters, go to page. Go to story card six. If you run to the side of the mansion, go to story card twenty. Servants' quarters. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me find the sex dungeon. Well, we did find a flashlight, so oh, we're on the right trail. We're on the trail. Oh my. Just as you reach for the doorknob, a fierce gust of wind violently flings open the door. The windows are all wide open, and the wind continues to rush through the quarters, blowing papers off tables and knocking an umbrella stand from the ground with a crash. Your arm accidentally knocks a teacup off the kitchen counter and shatters you on the floor. You clumsy buffoon. It's you that did it. I mean. didn't do it. You start to feel nervous. You notice a phone on the wall. This might be too much to handle alone. You grab the phone and call Sergeant Morrison. Edgebrook for police station. Sergeant Morrison speaking. Yeah, says, Sergeant, I just broke into a house. Uh, can you come help me? <laughs> Sergeant Morrison, you blurt out, it's me. I'm on the grounds of the Marsden house. I might be in trouble. Hello? Hello? Here, that's Hello? right, you're in trouble. We're coming to get you. Says the Sergeant evasively. With our silver shackles. It's me, you shout back. I need your help. Hello? Sergeant Morrison says, exasperated. Goodbye. He hangs up. Hello? Hello? You are unsure why the Sergeant couldn't hear you. But you are now distracted by a swirl of sounds. A haunting violin plays somewhere outside, while a wild and chaotic noise rises from the gazebo in the distance. It's like in mm. Frankenstein or Frankenstein. <laughs> if you move the direction of the violin, go to story card seventeen. If you check out the gazebo, go to story card nine. Oh, that's a good. I like the word gazebo, but I like violin. violin I think we should go to the towards the violin. I want to go towards the violin too. All right, why can't see. we do both? Why, uh, why can't we? <laughs> we just go back a card. Like, all right. <laughs> hmm. You can go back and do stuff you haven't done at the end of the mm-hmm. chapter. So if you want to get more crap, you can go back. Um, I let's what? I don't care. We can do either. We either one. go to the gazebo or we go towards the the sound of the violin. I think we should go to the gazebo because that way we won't get caught. When the cops get here? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Alright, let's go to the gazebo. Alright, we're going gazebo! to the gazebo. I, feel I wanted, like I wanted violin, but I was outvoted. Bazooka. You sprint to the gazebo, practically pushed along by the wind that is picking up. A Wait. light sprinkling of rain spatters the ground as you run. You make it to the shelter of the structure, and the English. mayhem occurring above you on the roof increases in intensity. <laughs> Who is up there, and what are they doing, you wonder? You wow. notice a driveway about 20 feet away. Premonition. If you are level 2 or higher on the psychic scale, nope. Rock hard. So what do we do? If you climb to the top of the gazebo, go to... Why the fuck would we do that? Go to story card 10. If you run to the driveway, go to story card 30. I don't want to do either. I think we should have gone towards the the violin. Well, too damn late. Well, let's go to the top of the gazebo. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't either. Outvoted again. Magical fucking flute up there. You stand on the gazebo's railing, steadying yourself by gripping an ornate post holding up the roof. The rumbling above sounds and feels frightening. What are you getting yourself into? Reluctant to barge into the middle of the situation, you raise yourself just enough to peek and discover that there's no one on the gazebo roof. The commotion is actually a large satellite dish broken into three pieces. The big jagged fragments are still connected to the base of my wires, and the violent winds are spinning them in a circle of great force. Flailing wildly like an angry octopus, the satellite dish almost hits you in the face. You might be able to grab a piece zooming by. Required challenge. Attempt to grab a piece of the satellite dish. Yeah. I don't know. There's two dice here. Win. We won. Okay. Forgot it's three, four, five, or six. Draw clue 22. You hold onto the top of the gazebo with one hand and time your lunge perfectly. You snag a chunk of the whirling satellite dish. The piece appears to be made by hand. An engraving on it reads, Planet of Crystals. Draw clue 7. Your psychic senses tell you that this is an important item. 
You look to your left and see a path to the driveway that might be to the front of the house. You jump off the gazebo and run to check it out. Keep this item, move forward one space on the psychic scale, go to story card 30. Chapter 1, Goal Achieved. You appear in a driveway which leads to the mansion's entrance. On the door is a plaque that reads Marsden and a large crystal door knocker, which seems newer than everything else on the whole front of the building. You knock loudly many times, but there is no answer. The storm is really picking up now. You try the doorknob, and you are surprised to find that the door is unlocked. You've been lucky enough so far, but you wonder if you've missed something. Before you enter the house, you look back. You can see a few clear paths. One leads towards statuary, another to a small cemetery. Two more paths stretch out towards a watery ditch with a gate and a house luxurious pool. You can go back to explore it if you want. Story return. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later in the story. You can take a risk and go back for any you missed by following the following choices. If you head to the statuary, raise the danger meter by 2 and go to story card 4. If you head to the cemetery, raise danger meter by 2 and go to story card 21. If you head to the ditch, raise danger meter by 2 and go to story card 26. If you head to the pool, raise danger meter by 2 and go to story card 23. Well, you didn't go to the statuary, you didn't go to the cemetery, you didn't go to the ditch, and you didn't go to the pool. <laughs> You guys decide. I've been outvoted. So I've many already. Times. I've already. Done oh, this to don't work. be sore. Don't be sore. Hey, we don't can do sore. all four. That'll, I think we should go to the six. We go to the cemetery. So what do you want to start do? with? I don't know what the danger zone is. That can be an issue. It's gonna go up to. One. You can do more than one. Oh shit. Man, what do we? You have six chapters to go though. Six. Yeah, that would raise us to here. There is a raging storm. Or put us up in the five zone, we wouldn't probably make it. Fuck it. Just gonna get in this crack house, burn it down. I think you're good to go. Sony can't say anything because she's played it before. End of chapter one. It's been fun, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Uh, I think. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hey everybody, welcome back to the House of Danger. We're doing It's So Dangerous! So spooky! A choose your own adventure board game. Cold we're, uh, sweats! We're doing chapter two today. Flashlights! <laughs> and as Sexy you can tell who servants. I'm... <laughs> Who's here today? A piece of toast! <laughs> Sonia, would you like to say something? Not really. Okay. Oh gosh. Let's get it on! This is an audio podcast. I'm waiting to play the game. Sorry. God. <laughs> this one? Yeah, card one. Chapter <laughs> two. <laughs> the mansion. The mansion. You made it. You're inside the Marsden house. The cursed edifice that has haunted your nightmares for weeks. Your trek through the mansion grounds has left you with far more questions than answers. To the point where you have to wonder if the smart move would be to turn around right now and forget you ever came to this infernal place. You're not you're no quitter though. Mama doesn't like a quitter. You're an aspiring detective and psychic investigator. You won't give up this case until you find out why a spooky futuristic mansion you'd never seen before has somehow found its way into your dreams and why you got a call from the house this morning. You're standing in a grand foyer. Its modern decor is elegant in its minimalism. Suddenly, foyer. its modern decor is elegant in its minimalism. Suddenly, a man in a delivery uniform bursts through. I was hoping it was a gimp suit. A set of tall double doors screaming, "Help! Help! They're after me!" Stab him the with the cries. pocket knife. He rushes towards you, but suddenly drops to the ground as if he's he had been hit by an invisible it's hammer. Like go to his knees with his ass in the air. You dash to his side and hear his breath coming in short gasps <laughs> that sound almost like sobs. Keep doing those gasps. He, he a must have had a night. He must be um, <laughs> Arn's boyfriend. <laughs> he gives a terrible shriek and lies still. This man has been frightened to death, you think. Go through his pockets. Just then, he inhales sharply, <gasps> jumps to his feet, and bolts past you. Yep, it's definitely John Babylon from Trip BTS. him! 
bolts past you and out of the house. You breathe a deep sigh of relief. So not quite to death, something falls from his clothing as he makes his exit. Must be a flashlight. And it hits the floor, tinkling. You kneel down to inspect the object and discover that it's a small dart. The kind that might have come from a blowgun. Whatever this oh, man was afraid of, his fear seems to have been justified. Just how dangerous is this house? As your thoughts swirl, a loud, buzzing noise erupts from somewhere beneath your feet, shaking the floor. The noise is so loud it drowns out the gathering storm outside. Just as quickly as it came, the noise stops. Huh. It sure sounds like something weird is happening beneath the manor. Yep. There's a sex room down there. You're willing to bet that whatever is happening in this place, the answers await you down there. Stepping into the marble floored art gallery, you are amazed by more than a hundred gold framed paintings, plus countless abstract modern sculptures on pedestals. Wow! The entire collection must be worth gazillions! Too bad you've got no time to admire any of it. You're eager to keep moving. French doors lead to the study, and a doorway leads outside. You can see a pathway leading to an attached structure that appears to be a mother-in-law apartment. Premonition. If you are level two or higher, we're not. On the psychic scale, okay, we're not. If you walk through the French doors to study, go to story card 33. If you take the path outside to the mother-in-law apartment, go to story card 46. How do we get to the basement? I think we study first. Yep, I, I'm up with the studying. Yeah, let's read some esoteric books. I don't want to go to mother-in-law's house. Okay. Alright. Once inside the study, you are shocked to find 12 pairs of eyes staring at you in outrage. You stop dead in your tracks. There are a dozen shady-looking people all stuffing briefcases with bundles of cold, hard cash. Literally, they're taking money out of ice-filled coolers. You take another step, and all but one of the guys take off, suddenly spooked. The last one turns and glares at you. Since he's still holding the briefcase tightly with both hands, you're pretty sure you can take him. You see a hallway on the other side of the room that might serve to be a quick exit. We gotta pretend we're supposed to be here. Walk in with confidence. All right. Optional challenge! Wrestle the man with the cash fill briefcase. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. Okay. If you win, oh, draw sorry. clue 38. Oh. It's a win! Draw clue 38. Okay. You're currently holding a briefcase that contains more money than Sergeant Morrison and Detective Murphy earn in two years. 30,000 bucks. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Yeah, it's we're a felony now. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. Finish story card 33. Head down the hallway by drawing clue 45. You know, actually, now that I think about it, we probably should have gone to the grandmother-in-law's house. Yep. You race down the hallway past photographs and paintings of an old prison. You reach the end of the hall and find a metal door. Chapter 2 Goal Achieved! You shove the metal door open. When you close it behind you, clang! It sounds like the door to a jail cell, cell slamming shut. You turn to check out where you are. There's an elevator! You get in the per you get in, press the closed door button, and finally get a moment to catch your breath. You can't believe what you've been through so far, but this elevator should be your ticket to the basement, and that should bring you one step closer to uncovering the mystery of the sounds you heard when you first entered the Marsden house. Now that you know where the elevator is, you wonder if you should go to the basement now. Or go back and investigate anything you might have missed. We need to investigate the old crone's house. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later in the story. You can take a risk and go back. And you miss. But. Chances are. 
stainless steel catheters. Okay, if you go to the upstairs hallway, raise the danger meter by two, and go to story card 39. No. If you go to the main dining room... No. Okay, I'm saying no. If you go to the solarium... No. Okay. <laughs> if you go to the gallery... No. Those, those are the only two what? choices. <laughs> Let's go to the gallery. Gallery, yeah, so we fine. can see some paintings. I think we should go to the mother-in-law's room. Well, that's not what my on choice is on. We can't do that. Maybe if we go to the gallery, we can go back around. to the room with the Jesus dogs. Christ! Right. We're going to the gallery to look at some art. So what do we do? Move the danger where? Got to move it up two. Okay. And I have. We're going to the gallery, so. So I gotta go back a card. What? So let's go to card 32. Yeah. Where's 32? Oh shit, it's in the pile. <laughs> Thank you, that's what I said. <laughs> Jesus. Oh shit, here we go. What happened? Yeah, man. Fifth Adam? Fifth Adam? <laughs> yeah. Live and in public, baby. Stepping into the marble art floored art gallery, you are amazed by more than a hundred gold framed paintings, plus countless abstract modern sculptures on pedestals. Wow! The entire collection must be worth gazillions! Too bad you've got no time to admire any of it. You are eager to keep moving. French doors lead to the study, and the doorway leads outside. You can see a pathway leading to an attached structure that appears to be a mother-in-law suite. All right, we're going to the mother-in-law suite, putting on her clothing and beating off. I think we should go back up to the study. <laughs> <laughs> There's another briefcase Wait, of money. You keep taking money. <laughs> this is a wonderful money-making scheme. <laughs> oh, go wait, to the danger card. Keep going up though. Forty-six. Card forty-six. You take the pathway to a wooden apartment with a quaint front porch. Shit. No one appears to be home. You try the door and find that it's open. You enter a room that's entirely dark. Uh, this is scary. I don't want to know what's in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to see what's happening in the room. Except for one candlelit corner where you see a leather desk chair turned away from you. With someone sitting in it. The chair slowly swivels to reveal a chimpanzee wearing a monocle and holding a ballpoint pen. Mother-in-law is kinky. <laughs> Looking you square in the eye. Uh-oh. Looks like you interrupted his work. The chimp calmly places the pen on the desk and removes his monocle. He cracks his knuckles and stands up. It's go time, bitches. <laughs> And this chimp is going for you. The chimp pants pounces. Required challenge! Fight the chimp. Win, lower the danger meter by five. Lose, raise by the five. Danger, danger meter by three. Somebody better roll something good. I got it. Or we're done. Fuck this chimp. Up. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Fucked it right properly. So now we go down five. After the fight. The chimp scurries away. I wasn't going to shit on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> You'd notice to your left, there is a large metal door, which looks completely out of place then. here. There's also a walkway leading toward what looks like the study in the main house. Fuck that. Metal, metal door. door. Metal door. It's unanimous, almost. Alright. Somebody's door. not playing anymore. I am. She's more interested in her phone. I was thinking about what time it was. We're boring her. It's been 15 minutes. We're gonna go through this whole game. Half past a chimpanzee's ass. I thought they said it takes six hours. Yeah, it's supposed to take an hour per chapter. I'm here. I'm guiding you but quickly. I'm amazing. We're not. <laughs> we're not ten. <laughs> Goal achieved. Goal. When you shove the metal door open, when you close it behind you, 
It sounds like the door to a jail cell slamming shut. Wait, what? Why did we not find anything from the monkey? We found a chimpanzee. But he didn't have anything. Let's see. I might have missed something. Here. We've got what? to move, we got to move our danger meeting. Yeah, but meter. All right. That was it. Stupid. We don't get like the pen or anything. No. no. We could go back. Is we lowered our danger meter. We can go somewhere else. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Solarium. Something. Tam tam tam. Sanitarium. You want to go to the solarium? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. sure. All right. Two of us are playing. <laughs> One's drawn dicks. I have not yeah, drawn a single dick yet. Once you've entered the solarium, you notice how the glass panes are in angular shapes that create a spider web pattern across the ceiling. That's on the clue! <laughs> That's in the picture. There are clay pots with exotic plants Fun. on every flat surface. Welcome, you hear a female voice say. We are so glad you found your way here. An elderly woman in a long black dress, white apron, and white apron collides into view from behind a Sexy wall. Sexy time, lunch lady. <laughs> she appears to be the housekeeper. Ooh, naughty housekeeper. She raises one finger and curls it towards you. Irons into old people. <laughs> Toward you, beckoning you. We've been expecting you. Come this way, she says. Something in her voice makes you freeze. Yeah, because she's ugly as shit. This might be trouble. You notice something shiny tucked behind your tropical scrub. Shrub. Scrub. I thought I was going to notice something tucked behind. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Einhorn is a man. <laughs> but you'll probably have to deal with the housekeeper before you can investigate it. Well, you glimpse an art gallery beyond the, sol the solarium. Optional challenge! Attempt to excuse yourself. I'm going to excuse myself all over you her win, back. You draw clue 39. We lose. We draw clue 53. Who's going to roll? I succeeded on the last challenge. Yeah, here we go. It's Sonya's turn. You know how I feel about Aunt May, right? Woohoo! We made it. Win! Yeah. Now fist that bitch. Draw clue 39. Oh, what? What one? 39. 39. Is it in my stack? Shut up. Assholes. <laughs> so many clues and we haven't even got any of them. Large metal rod. That looks like a dildo. Yes, it does. That really looks like a dildo. I can you see calmly right explain to the woman that you'd rather not go with her. I she want returns to. to tending her plants. God damn it. You grab the shiny object and before cram leaving it up her butthole. And find that. I mean, we've already it's a war stolen like It's warm to the. Broken yeah, into two yeah, yeah, houses. Yeah, yeah. You find that it's... What's it smell like? <laughs> it's warm to the touch. <laughs> Your psychic t psychic senses tell you this is an important item. You slip away to the art gallery. Keep this item. Move forward three spaces on the psychic scale. Holy shit! Level two psychicness. Oh my. <laughs> so we, we found a flashlight and a vibrator. Nice. If you rudely run away to the art gallery, go to story part three. But we didn't. If you ignore her and leave through the solarium door, go to story card 55. So we didn't rudely leave. No. We just stole her vibrator and left. We just stole her vibrator I'm going to assume, assume that we ravished her to a state of complete relaxation this and half sleep. Relaxation? This is what Arn's type is right here. Aunt May. She's just laying there. In the afterglow, <laughs> the afterglow of her new penthouse so encounter. So we're going to story card 55, since we didn't rudely run out of the room. Sure, why not? But hey, we're going to give her a 55. fake phone number. Shut up, algebra girl. <laughs> you start to leave, but the woman senses your fear. Uh-oh, Arn, run! <laughs> She smiles again and then begins to fade. Round two. You can see right through her now. Her shadowy shape wavers and shifts, billowing like a hazy cloud. Go straight. In seconds, she has taken on a new form. A sexier form. <gasps> a Union general. He has a heavy whip. In oh one no! Hand. <laughs> and Does that make hand. me ghost gay? I don't know. <laughs> it's clenched I mean, into it's okay a fist. if I am. 
is clenched into a fist. He's gonna fist What's he you. Gonna fist? He's gonna fist you. <laughs> <laughs> the plants around the room grow to become ten feet tall. Even in the darkness, you can tell that they are Venus flytraps. But at this size, they won't be content with flies. The I was general, say, but I'm not a fly. The general has a crazed look in his eyes for Arn. And a bulging heart. As though he's suffering arm. from a sudden fit Pulsating of rage. Pulsating manhood. You think you can challenge the authority of Henry Marsden? Are we, he I, excuse me, I want like a southern kind of uh He's Union, motherfucker. It's not, so, he's not that, southern. Then I want like he's a not Boston Johnny Reb. accent. He's not Johnny Reb. Then I want a Boston accent. Yeah, no, I can't even... You were you doing think, it earlier today. You think you can challenge the authority of Henry Marsden? He <laughs> shouts. He snaps his whip on the floor three times, and all the giant Venus flytraps move toward you. With every shred... I gotta pay $80? I gotta pay $80 for this shit? <laughs> With every shred of his ghostly power, Marsden snaps the whip at your feet. The force of the violent crack is so mighty it sends you sailing backwards, directly into the maw of one of the hungry plants. The Venus fight flytrap takes three quick bites and one slow gulp. You no longer exist. The end. Move back one space on the psychic scale and return to story card 40. Well, that's been a good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so much for six hours. I can't believe we got fisted by a Civil War general. We did. Holy shit. Is that good enough Boston accent for you? Nah. That's 47. No <laughs> shit, it's not in the deck. Nine. There it is. Shut up. I'm having troubles. We didn't pick on Nick that bad. Boy. Why are you picking on me? I hope old General Mosden takes his fleshlight and skews you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Once you have entered really rude. the solarium, you notice how the glass panes are angular shapes that create a spiderweb pattern across the ceiling. There are clay pots with exotic plants on every flat surface. Welcome, you hear a female voice say. We are so glad you found your way here. An elderly woman in a long black dress and white apron glides into view from behind a wall. Let's get her flashlight again. Arn's, <laughs> Arn's ready for her again. She appears to be the housekeeper. She raises one finger and puts it up his butt. <laughs> and curls it toward her. Beckoning you. <laughs> We've been expecting you, big boy. Come this way, she says. Something in her voice makes Arn freeze. This might be trouble. You notice something shiny tucked behind your butt. A tropical shrub. But you'll probably have to deal with the housekeeper before you can investigate it. You glimpse an art gallery beyond the solarium. Optional challenge! Attempt to excuse yourself. Win, draw clue 39. Lose, draw clue 53. Can we win this? Yeah, yep. I think we should, you Fuck know, it up. we can keep doing this over and over. We could bump our psychic back one, but then it goes up three. Yeah. I think we should run. I think Are we, we going to rudely run away? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. We're running away from the lady this time. We're not gonna be like, "Oh, excuse me, lady, we're leaving." Oh. We're not gonna have sex with this time because she's really a dude. Oh, that's right. Okay. And this is the '80s. You'll get sick. That okay. Way. Stepping into the marble room. I Lord. assumed that we were a boy. I mean, <laughs> maybe you assumed we were a girl. I don't know. That's what was in your head. Stepping into the marble floored art gallery, you are amazed by more than a hundred gold <laughs> frame paintings. Wow, the entire collection must be worth gazillions. Wow. Too bad you've got no time to Holy shit. Oh it. my. You're eager to keep moving. French doors lead to the study, and a doorway leads outside. 
you can see a pathway leading to an attached structure that appears to be the mother-in-law. Let's go to the mother-in-law's house. <laughs> so we've been in both of them. Which one are we going to now? I feel like this is an exploit. I feel like it's fucking Groundhog Day. Which one do we die in? The grandmother's? Or the, well, we fought a monkey. That's we where we go. Yeah, we can go fight the monkey. We're going to go fight the monkey again? Yeah. Okay. No, no. We, we died to, we no. to General we Mazden fisting dude. on. Oh, we bought the monkey and found the elevator. Hey, on, I found your car keys. No, we found the and elevator your before we found the monkey. And your butt. Did we? Yes. Who? All right. Oh, you way to fuck us. Way to fuck <laughs> us. <laughs> you take the pathway to a wooden apartment with a quaint front porch. No one appears to be home. You try the door and find it on fire. <laughs> it's open. Get a lighter. You un enter a room that's entirely dark, except for one candlelit corner, where you see a leather desk chair turned away from you, with someone sitting in it. Shitting in it or sitting in it? The chair slowly, the chair slowly swivels to reveal a chimpanzee wearing a monocle and holding a ballpoint pen. Oh, hello there. Hello. Where are you a strap on? <laughs> oh shit. There goes the planet. Looking you square in the eye. Uh oh. Looks like you interrupted his work. The chimp calmly places the pen on the desk and removes his monocle, cracks his knuckles, and stands up. It's go time, bitches! And this chimp is going for you, the chimp pantses. Require challenge! Win, lower the danger meter by five. Did we win? Yeah, bitches! We won. Okay. Why do I need to talk? Okay. So, our meter's already lower than we need it. We're good. We're good. Alright. If you go to the open door, go to story card 60. If you take the walkway to the study, go to story card 33. You gonna fight General Mazden again? Is that in the study? No, I think it's no, through the metal I think door. We should go to the, no, the door is the elevator. We should be actually in route. No, that's the end of the story. That's the end of the chapter. Is going to the elevator. Okay, so we're going to the to the metal door. Or are we going to the study? What? I think we should go to the door. Okay. We did the study. Jeez. All right, chapter two, goal achieved. You shove the metal door open. When you close it behind you, it sounds like the door to a jail cell slamming shut. You turn to check out where you are. There's an elevator! You get in, press the closed door button, and finally get a moment to catch your breath. You can't believe what you've been through so far, like Arn getting fisted by a Union General! But this elevator should be your ticket to the basement, and that should bring you one step closer to uncovering the mystery of the sounds you heard when you first entered the Marsden house. Now that you know where the elevator is, you wonder if you should go to the basement now, or go back and investigate anything you might have missed. Nope. Going to the basement because we don't want to get fucked up by the general again. We don't have to. What? Like what? We've already been through all of them. Have we? I know there's a lot of clues here. Unless it's the danger, danger, the dining room, or. Danger dining room? Danger dining room. We could go to the upstairs hallway, I guess. The stairway leads up to a long hallway. A violent <laughs> rug with tasseled edges runs the length of the hall, and strange ab abstract paintings line the walls. A vase of lilies sits on an ornate side table halfway down the hall. A gorgeous wooden piece with rich floral engravings on the front and sides. See, I'm trying to read that. <laughs> Without warning, a ghostly figure comes through the door, through a door up ahead and on your right. The ghost doesn't even acknowledge your presence as he rushes right through a closed door on the other side of the hall. The hallway seems colder than when you entered. Should you follow the ghostly figure? Or perhaps inspect the room he came for? Optional challenge!
I say we inspect the room. I say we do the optional challenge. Okay. Search the ornate table. When you draw clue 29, lose, you raise the danger meter by one. Did you lose? No. That's if you lose. 29? Did we win? I don't yeah. know. Here, give me one of those dice. I'm going to keep one at my end. Okay. I'm going to roll there the optional go. challenge. We made it. We won, so draw clue 29. 29. A glass key. That sounds dangerous. You open a drawer and find a book. A drawer? A drawer. See? My, my accent's coming out again. And find a book. The middle portions of its pages are cut away. And inside the hollow area sits a glass key. Perhaps you'll find a use for this. Keep this item. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. Yes! Finish story card 39. Yes! If you follow the ghost, we go to story card 59. If you try to see where the ghost came from, go to story card 36. If you follow the ghost, go to story card 59. <laughs> if you try to see where the ghost came from, go to story 36. I say we go see where the ghost came from. Okay. Yes? It was her choice. It was her choice? I so deemed it. I have right. given her a choice. One choice. <laughs> you arrive in a large room with high ceilings and five billiard tables lined up in the center. Four of the tables are lit by exquisite lamps suspended above them. Billiard balls are neatly racked on the fifth table, which sits in the shadows as if waiting for a game to begin. A small bar stands against one wall. Atop the bar, 15 overturned crystal glasses are arranged to form a pyramid. There's a weirdly small door on the far side of the room. It seems to have been designed for a child, but you might be able to squeeze through it if you try. You hear rain pattering against the skylight window. It's nearly dusk outside, and the rain appears to have started in earnest. Premonition. Optional challenge! Inspect the billiards table in the shadows. Win, you draw clue 33. Lose, you raise the danger meter by one. Alright, that's a win. You find a switch, and the pool table turns over to reveal a strange motorized mechanism. Maybe it lowers the table down to the basement. Or if you want to hop on the table and flip the switch, go to story card 52. Wait, flip the switch? I say we go to story card. We stand on it. Push the lever. I don't know why we would stand on a billiard table. But yeah, let's do it. Okay. You climb onto the table and wait to descend. Something's wrong. You begin to go up instead of down. You rise rapidly and crash through the skylight. Glass shatters all around you. The lift keeps going up until you're almost two full stories above the house. The rain is falling so heavily that you're quickly soaked and dark clouds roil on the horizon all around you. You see lightning strike in the distance, and you're filled with horror as you realize you are now on a towering metal pillar in the middle of a thunderstorm. This is a giant lightning rod! Lightning strikes the hydraulic lift, and you feel a searing flash of heat as millions of volts pulsate through your body. The shock forces you to let go of the pole, and before you hit the ground, you black out. Forever. God damn it, we died again. The end. Let's move <laughs> back go, one Nick. space on the psychic scale and return to story card 36. <laughs> you arrive in a large room with high ceilings and five billiard tables lined up in the center. We're going to do the other thing. Four of the... We're going to do the other thing? You want me to skip the reading? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to do the challenge. Or are we going to squeeze through the small door going to story card 44? Doorway, right? We've already done the challenge, right? Yep. Alright. Entering a child's playroom, you find a giant overstuffed toy box resting against one wall. And in the middle of the room stands a dollhouse, which appears to be a perfect replica 
of the Marsden House. As you approach the dollhouse, you notice that the walls of the playroom are covered with shelves full of porcelain dolls. <laughs> their eyes peering down at you. It's difficult to break their gaze. The eyes seem to draw you into the blackness of their dead souls. I mean, stairs. And not looking away, you feel yourself shrinking smaller and smaller. Soon, the dolls seem to loom over you, even more frightening than before. Although they never move from their perches, eventually, you're the size of a doll yourself, and you stand on the playroom floor besides the replica of the Marsden house. From where you stand, you can see the front door of the dollhouse. There's only one choice for this. Enter the, doll the door of the dollhouse by going to story card 49. Alright. The dollhouse entryway has doorways leading to a dining room, a parlor, and a bedroom. Before you can think about where you should go next, something distracts you. There's a force at work here, a presence you can't ignore. Something or someone seems to be calling you, drawing you onward. You can tell. This dollhouse is a hub of psychic energy, a nexus of weird power. You'll need to stay sharp. All right. If you go to the dollhouse dining room, we go to story card 35. We go to the dollhouse parlor, we go to 57. If we go to the dollhouse bedroom, we go to story card 40. We're going to the dollhouse bedroom. Dollhouse bedroom? Arn's got a thing not? for bedrooms. And We're girls with soulless on. black eyes. Yep. Okay, the dollhouse bedroom is filled with miniature furnishings, which are now full size to you. A cozy chair, a dresser, a lamp in a bed. A sex swing. Lying in the bed. Oh, yeah! Its head on a pillow is a stuffed mouse. Oh. It's so lifelike. <laughs> you catch yourself, Arn, thinking you should, uh... Fuck it? Penetrate it. <laughs> you should step quietly so you don't wake it up. Your psychic senses start to pulse. You get the feeling something... What starts to pulse? <laughs> you My tell, you throbbing te manhood? You tell us, Arn. <laughs> you get the feeling... No, I want you to tell me. Something very... And, and when you do it, it sounds sexy. Something important. And don't look at me. <laughs> it's not real if, it's, if we're not looking at each other. Get the feeling something very important is hidden in this room. It's hidden in that mouse's butt. Free action. We can't do that free action, so we gotta go to the next side. Oh, look, he's showing, you, showing his butt to you. <laughs> My god. It wants it. Okay, if you go to the dollhouse dining room, go to story 35, card 35. If you go to the dollhouse parlor, go to story card 57. Dining room. Dining room? Sure, why not? I was gonna say parlor, but... We can do both. Yeah. Let's just go back and... <laughs> Seated at the head of the dollhouse dining room table is a doll wearing a crown. It's a doll king with oddly compelling glass eyes. They sparkle with a kind of dark power. As you look into those eyes, you sense a strange tingle in your penis. I mean your mind. This doll is reaching out to you mentally. You don't know <laughs> why... But you feel that he wants to fight you. Well, that's not what I would think he when he's to trying, to, trying to jerk you off. <laughs> On the plane of pure thought, you sense this could help you strengthen your psychic abilities. Around the dining room table, two doors lead to other rooms inside the dollhouse. Optional challenge! Overpowered the doll king with your giant cock. I mean, your mind. All right, win. Draw clue 56. Lose. Raise danger meter. By three. You may try again. Lose. Let's try again. <laughs> Did that go up? Or can I try again? Yeah, yeah, let's go up by three. And then you try again. Win! <laughs> we need clue 56. You protect your thoughts. At the little, you project your thoughts at the protect little king. Protect your cup. Project your thoughts at the little king. Like light through a magnifying glass, you focus on the doll's mind. 
narrowing your thoughts into a tight beam. Finally, when you can hardly take it no more, the doll blinks. <laughs> you won! Keep this card. Move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Psychic scale. And now we gotta go back to card 35. I don't wanna read that again. So, okay. After the challenge, make the story choice below. If you go to the dollhouse parlor, go to story 57. If you go to the dollhouse bedroom, go to story, story card 41. Yeah, parlor, I guess. I guess we're going to the parlor. Oh, I love it. Dude, how much psychic stuff do we get? Two. All right. This is actually a pretty fun game. My throat's getting a little sore. So can we win this time, all right? <laughs> a piano takes up one corner of the dollhouse parlor. A doll sits on a piano bench wearing a crown and a rich red gown. Hands poised above the keys. This is the doll queen. And even though her back is turned, you feel as though she's daring you to face her in some kind of a bizarre piano contest of the mind. Perhaps accepting the queen's unusual challenge and defeating her will increase your psychic skills. You notice a painting above the piano. It depicts a solarium and is so spellbindingly realistic you can't help but reach out your hand to touch it. You are amazed when your hand disappears into the painting and you can touch the solarium on the other side. This painting is a magical portal and it might be your only way out of this dollhouse. Right. Optional challenge! Satisfy the doll queen. Satisfy the doll queen in a psychic piano duel. By psychic piano duel, I mean. Yeah, player piano. I'm gonna play that piano with your finger. My tongue. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta raise the danger meter by three. What? And Aaron can roll again. Hell yeah, I'm gonna try again. <laughs> Raise the danger meter by three. Oh. One, two. Now what are our options? <laughs> try again. Or you not have to get try six again. Or a six. You have to get a six or a six, bud. We have to get a six? Yeah. Yep. Oh shit. Oh, that's how the danger meter works. Uh should we what happens if we We do have a first aid kit. What happens if we get to that negative two on the danger meter? So oh. we go up to here. Mm-hmm. And it brings us all back to here, and we go down two spaces on the psychic. Oh. Okay. We're doing this just to get, like, one psychic thing. Pretty much. So, what do you think? Should we use the first aid kit, or should we just go for it? I still we use the first aid kit. No, actually, it goes all the way back down to here. Oh. If we oh, go yeah, all the way up there. The we, need, we need to use the first aid kit, then. Okay. Well, how do you use it? I don't know. Yeah. Discard it any time to move the lower to the four. All right. Get rid of it. One, two, three, four. All right, Arn. All right, I'm going to try again. Get that booty on the floor. I made it. It's a four. All right, we won. Everybody look. Oh, four. <laughs> Draw clue 30. C, 30. 30 C. All right, the queen's hands don't move, but you hear her incredible piano playing swirl through the parlor her as fast as ecstasy. the wind. Now it's your turn. Reaching out to the piano with your brain, you weave notes into an intricate music manic waltz even faster and more beautiful than the queen's your music dances throughout the room the queen's crown falls to the floor you've bested her you win keep this card move forward two spaces on the psychic scale finish story on card 57 do we want to go to the dollhouse dining room okay If you have clue 50 and you want to enter the magical portal, draw clue 47. Nope. Shit. If you do not have clue 50 and you want to enter the magical portal, draw clue 55. You take a deep breath and jump into the portal. A pins and needles sensation spreads over your body as you travel the dimensional pathway. When you reach the other side, you're standing in the solarium you saw in the picture. You've returned to normal size. Okay, I gotta go to story 40 minutes. Double check our jump just to make sure. Once you've entered 
the solarium. You notice how the glass panes are... I've already read this. Okay, we can fight the old woman again. No. Or we can rudely run away and go to card 32 or go to the solarium door, story card 55. We're not going to the solarium, are we? I yep. lost track. So did I. I know we gotta fight the monkey and go through the door. I don't wanna fight the monkey again. <laughs> so you wanna go to the art gallery? No. no. That's the better. only two choices we have, guys. Oh, shit. The monkey then. So we can fight the monkey and go to the basement. Which one right? was the monkey in? He's in the mother in law's cavern. So he's up through the. So we need to go through the art gallery? Yes. Okay. Worth gazillions of dollars. Oh my god, it's a gazillion dollars. This is taking forever. Are you sure you're running this right? You guys are the ones who are choosing this shit, not me. I'm just reading. This is a long episode. This is your fault. <laughs> Dumbass over there got fisted by General Marsden. If you take the path outside to the mother-in-law apartment, go to 46. Yes. We fight the monkey, now what? There's a monkey with a monocle and a pen. He says, oh, it's time to hump your ass. And he attacks us. <laughs> Cracks his knuckles and said, your ass is mine, bitch. If you open the metal door, go to story card 60. If you take the walkway to the study, go to story card 33. Metal door, right? Yeah, because we want to end this episode, right? Yeah. All right. Congratulations, we won. Yay! Yay! Nothing else to see here. Uh, that's it for the, this episode. Uh, have a great night, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the House of Danger, the choose-your-own-adventure game that we've been playing. This is uh, Chapter 3, and I'm Arn! Arn! Kirk. Nick. Sonia. Arn! <laughs> Sorry, go on. Sonia. Chapter 3, <laughs> The Rescue. You're still not sure what's really going on in this place. You are already freaked out by the creepy stuff you saw outside the Marsden house. And the discovery of the actual spirit from beyond the grave inside... And dis the, dis <laughs> the discovery of the actual spirit from beyond the grave inside the house has only made you more on edge. Only made you more on edge? Sure. You steal your nerves and remind yourself that you're not just an aspiring detective. You're a psychic investigator. You eat spirits from beyond the grave for breakfast! Not really. And it really says that. It really says Not that. really. I like that. It's a chimp but the point is, monocle. you feel a surge of confidence. You can do this. At any rate, you've come way too far to turn back now. So all you can do is hope that the depths of this house hold some insight into the mysterious nightmares that have plagued you for weeks and drew you to this modern architecture house of horrors in the first place. But the elevator, which all your hopes rest on, is totally trashed. The last person to use it must have really needed to use the restroom because there is shit everywhere. No. The last person to use it must have really hated elevators. Based on the scratch marks on the walls, they might have had sharp claws, too. A strange sensation washes over you. Your head spins and you lose your balance. You lose your bowels, you shit all over yourself, and you fall to your knees. Although you don't quite black out, you're overwhelmed by visions as your consciousness leaves your body and travels through the house's lower reaches on mind power alone. You drift downward, downward through a meeting room full of huge, shadowy figures and a laboratory stocked with equipment. Continue the story on page 61. Your awareness projects deeper. Under the estate, you find they come to into a jail cell. Your mind can't penetrate to see who's inside, but a wave of anguish emits like heat from the sun. You sense that the person trapped inside is responsible for what you've encountered so far and could help you with what you'll encounter next. Draw clue 76 to discover your goal. Your mind joins your body again as... 
though swiftly snapping back into place. It takes you to the moment to get you <laughs> it takes you a moment to get your bearings and mine too. You're in your own body, in an elevator, in a spooky house that you somewhat regret ever setting foot inside. You check the panel and find that all the buttons have been pried off except for two. I'm actually adding some words to make it sound better, so it, you know, proper English. They don't put panels. <laughs> they might be for the, they might be for the only active basement levels. Of course, it's also possible they're just the floors that whoever wrecked this elevator wants to lure you to. With a whoosh, the elevator doors briskly close. If you press button number two, go to story card 71. If you press button number three, go to story card 78. Two. Two. Two it is. Two, two please. Deuce. 71. Sub-basement two seems like the safer bet. At the very least, it's one less flight of stairs to climb back up if things go south and you need to flee up to the surface. That's what going south is. The elevator opens into administrative offices. Just as you enter the room, a television monitor crackles to life. On the screen is a video feed of a haggard man in a lab coat. The camera pans up until his face fills the screen. If you can hear this, your life is in danger, he says. My former assistant has locked me up in the detention cells and is using all of our discoveries for evil. You must help me escape! If we don't stop her, the video feed cuts off! Oh, we got a picture. Ooh. Yes. There's a closed door on the far wall. And an open, uncovered air duct that you could easily fit into if you lubed yourself up with that giant vat of KY jelly you keep in your back pocket. If you try the door, or do you crawl through the air duct? Air duct. Air duct. Air duct. You pull out your extra large container of Astroglide and lube yourself up right proper. The air duct takes you over a loud room full of what sounds like a gang of rowdy hooligans. You peek through a grate and discover a group of massive, savage chimps sitting at a conference table, snorting and growling and beating off. Actually, it says beating their chests, but we're going to say they're snorting, growling, and beating off. Well, chimps do a like woman to beat off. sits at the head of the table, speaking to them, but you're too far away to hear over the chaos. There's a smaller, more rickety air duct that leads to the wall by the woman. And if you're careful, you could probably make it there to hear what she's saying. You can also see from here that the air duct you're in splits off and terminates into two other rooms. The room on the left is dimly lit by the glow of blue liquid in some sort of large glass vats. The room on the right is pitch black. You could quietly crawl to either and jump out. Optional challenge! Crawl through the rickety air duct to hear the woman speak! If you win, you get a clue card! If you lose, the danger meter goes up too! We're doing it, apparently. And it's a success! Draw clue 84! You crawl through the rickety air duct without breaking it, or yourself, and overhear the woman lecturing the chimps on ways to improve the profitability of their counterfeiting operation. The chimps are less than attentive. You're busy jacking it. If you crawl back into the main <laughs> vent, not sure what to think. Finish story card 65. You're back to those choices now. You can crawl through the left duct and jump out in the room with the glowing blue, or you can crawl through the right duct into the room that it's black. Blue room. Blue room. Blue. It's on the card. You see rows and rows of glowing blue vats, all filled with chimpanzees in various stages of development. The largest ones are as big as adult humans, and well-endowed. Someone is bending the laws of nature to unethical extremes down here. The vats are plugged into a utility box on the wall. On top is a glowing cap with three crystals. It might be some kind of power source. Something about this crystalline cap calls to you. It feels important. From the utility box, cords and wires run into an adjoining room through a propped open door. There's also a conveyor belt that leads through an opening to the far wall. 
The belt is moving slowly and the motion is mildly hypnotic. Optional challenge? Pry the crystal in cap loose! I guess it's not really optional. <laughs> Do it! Doing it. Sonya rolls and gets a four! Success! We won! Draw clue 87! Crystalline cap! You pry the crystalline cap from the utility box! Even unplugged, it keeps glowing! This object gives you a shiver! And a boner! Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward three spaces on the psychic scale. Now you have a choice. If you follow the cords through the door, or you can jump on the conveyor belt to see where it goes. Nope. Conveyor belt it is! <laughs> Let's do the conveyor belt. This room is full of bananas! And money! At a glance, you can see that the money is counterfeit, and very poorly counterfeited at that. Instead of presidents, the bills feature... Pictures of bananas! Along with the banana bills, the room contains squashed bananas that must have been run through the printing press. It's as if whoever was making all this funny money was a little distracted. <laughs> There's a precarious pile of bananas beneath a high shelf, and you can see a box up there. You can probably climb up there to check it out, if you dare. There's a door leading out into the hallway. Next to the door is a large, unlocked freezer unit built into the wall. Premonition. If you're level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, and you are, draw clue 72. Clue 72! It's a drawing of a door. Should I tell you? I don't know. I think it's, it. it's a door. It looks like this is part of a puzzle? I don't know. Anyway, that's your premonition. That's a door? That's a pretty shitty premonition. Required challenge! Climb the banana pile. It's actually optional, but I'm making it required. Success! Draw clue 83! Snazzy tracksuit. You scale the teetering heap of bananas and snag the box. You open it to find a sleazy tracksuit. <laughs> this will give you agility. And style. Um, it's got a picture of a foot plus a dice of two. So anything that we need to uh, have a dexterity roll on, uh huh. Oh, we get a cool. plus two if we use that. Kind of like the knife, if we need anything that we use fighting with, we uh -huh. can add a dice to it. Sweet. Now you have a choice: head into the hall or go into the freezer unit. Freezer unit. Freezer unit. Freezer unit. It is. The moment you open the freezer door, a stench overtakes you. Oh, iron farted It's so here. cloyingly sweet that you almost gag. Then you hear breathing. A creature stands before you on four bulbous legs that jut out from a curved, elongated yellow body. Its pale skin is peeled back the head to reveal soulless black eyes of an enormous... <laughs> And an enormous mouthful of razor sharp teeth. It's a banana! A hideous shark mouth banana! Crafted by some manner of mad science or dark sorcery far beyond your understanding! The creature shrieks and snorts! And then it charges you! It's Requ heading right for us! This is the shark banana picture. Everybody on air is missing out. Required challenge! Fight the banana creature. We win! Yeah. Draw clue 69, dude. Victor. 69. 69. <laughs> you enjoy mutual anal. Whoa! Whoa what? <laughs> mutual oral <laughs> sex with the banana monster. <laughs> 69. Its maw may be terrifying, but it's so warm. Soft. Its maw may be terrifying, but the creature's insides are as soft and squishy as you expected a banana animal to have. You split it in two. And a glob of its flesh winds up in your mouth. I'm not making this up. <laughs> It tastes amazing! <laughs> You're completely rejuvenated! <laughs> Lower day.
danger meter by three. <laughs> Move forward two spaces on the psychic scale and go to card 79. <laughs> With the creature satisfied, you have a good opportunity to search the freezer unit which is an old triangle-shaped chamber designed to be opened on three sides. You see a huge bed of banana leaves in the corner piled with miscellaneous garbage. There might be something valuable in this weird nest, if you can stomach sifting through it. There's also a large block of solid ice stuck to the wall with something frozen inside. Perhaps you can break it open. You find that the freezer doors can be opened from the inside. You hear the soft hum of a machine purring behind one of them, and the other is utterly quiet. Challenge! There's two optional challenges. We're making them all required. Challenge number one! Search the creature's nest! Success! Draw clue 88. Clue 88! A battery! This is a standard 9-volt battery. It could power a flashlight, or a taser, or a vibrator. Or a flashlight. Or a flashlight. Who knows what else? Keep this item. Awesome. Challenge number two. Break open the block of ice. Uh, you cock monkey! It wasn't his turn. It wasn't my turn anyway. Oh! Break the block of ice. Ooh. You cock monkey! <laughs> Raise the danger meter by one! Can she go again? You may try again. <laughs> yes! No! Oh, success! She failed! <laughs> Damn it, no! You jizz monkey! Oh no! Raise wait, the danger wait, wait. meter by one! Hold up, hold up. We got anything we can use? It's a strength. It's a arm. Oh. Uh -oh. No. Nope. We don't have anything. Raise the danger meter by one. You may try again. Si, sí, senorita. Yes. Success! Success! Finally! Draw clue 58. Clue 58! A homemade ghost trap. It's a cassette tape recorder hardwired to a storage tank. An index card on the back says the tank is an astral containment vessel. So instead of capturing sounds, it captures ghosts. Your psychic senses tell you this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. Now, do you want to go to the humming door or the silent one? You decide. Humming. It's the sound of a massive vibrator. <laughs> this room is filled with generators of every shape and size, and they all look extremely unsafe. In fact, one of the older, larger ones has a huge crack in its casing, but it's still running, with irregular bursts of electricity arcing from it to every nearby surface. You'd rather not get too close to it, but you'll have to if you want to investigate the door to a vault on the other side. I remember a vault in that picture. Anybody remember a vault? The only other exit isn't a door at all, but a massive hole in the wall where the boys can see it all. It's a hole in the wall that leads into total darkness. As you feel around the dark for a light switch, you discover that the passageway isn't so much of a hallway as a tunnel with rough walls that have been dug out of rock and soil. Do you try to get past a cracked generator to reach the vault, or do you tunnel into the dark, take the tunnel into the darkness? <laughs> say tunnel. Tunnel. A tunnel. You can't see more than a few feet in front of you as you walk down the tunnel. So when a man's sexy voice calls out from the darkness, you almost jump out of your skin. Hey, you. <laughs> you freeze. What now? You're the new lab assistant, right? It's about time you got here. You have the briefcase. You have, if you have clue 38, give it to the mysterious stranger by discarding it and drawing clue 62. We have it. Give it to him. You have no choice. I'll take that. Chapter 2. I didn't want the bag of money. I'll take I chapter 2. A bag of dicks. Chapter 2. Is that Who is that? Me? 38. And this is from chapter 2. What? 62. Yep. Clue card 62. 
pleasure doing business, he says. Even though he, you gave him what he wanted, he still spits on the floor and grumbles about his crew waiting for him in the garage as he hurries away. Your psychic senses tell you that giving him this briefcase was the right thing to do. Move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Monkey money. The man rushes back down the tunnel in the direction he came from, his footsteps booming in the darkness. There's a door with iron bars built into the wall here. It looks like it could lead to some sort of cell or maybe a kennel. It's unlocked. If you follow the man down the tunnel, or you can open the cell door to see what's inside. Cell door. Cell door. Cell door. That's our mission. You slide open the barred door. It looks much more industrial than the other rooms you've been in. The door slides shut on its own. Clang! You hear it lock behind you. You see some kind of gated structure down the hallway in front of you and quickly press yourself against the wall when you realize two figures are guarding it. There's also a desk on the side of the room that's out of the guard's line of sight. Premonition. Draw clue 80. It's a brain on fire! Or maybe fire is jutting out of the brain. Do you try your luck with the guards? Or do you sneak across the room to the desk? You sneak across the room to the desk? Story card 63! <laughs> Thanks for the choice. Story you make teller? it to the desk unnoticed. The only thing here is a fancy new computer. It's an Apple II. E? It's a shiny beige box underneath a monitor that glows with rows of green text and a bleaking command prompt slash run. Oh, Apple II. Yeah, if you can I manage you. to break through the computer's security, you might find some useful information stored in its internal memory. It's hard drive of two gigabytes. Maybe that's Maybe. too much. Is that generous? That's a lot. That is very generous. <laughs> Optional challenge. Search the computer for information. If you are level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, add a plus 1 to your roll in addition to any eye challenge boosters. Yep. That's plus 2. Plus 2, so plus 3. You can't lose. Win! Draw clue 66. Clue 66. You can't crack the computer's security, but then you notice an index card taped to the underside of the monitor. Written on the card is Porn. B at N at N at Banana. <laughs> Could this be our computer's password? You try it. Boop! It works! After a few seconds of poking around in some files, you learn that there's a very important prisoner being held in cell C. The only way out of here is down a hall to the gate, which is guarded by two chips. Looking for story card 74. The two guards are huge chimpanzees as tall as you are. They're walking upright, just as you are. They're wearing security guard uniforms, just as you are not. They notice this key difference. They attack. <laughs> Required challenge. <laughs> Battle the guards with a fist. <laughs> yeah, we're going to knife those bitches. Yeah, pocket knife. Pocket knife. Who's, it's a... Uh, Fight history. them! Fight! Fight! Fight those damn Fight. dirty Fight. apes! Fight! Yes. yes! Yes! Win! Turn over this card and continue reading. Lose! Suck a butthole. <laughs> Once you defeat the chimpanzee guards, you find that the gate will only open with an electronic key card. Do we have clue 28 or 77? You're losers! Go to card 69, dude. What? Oh, no. You do not have clue 28 or 77. Go to story card 88. 88? Haven't we been to 88? Without that key card, you're trapped. You can't get past the gate, and you can't leave the detention center through the locked front door. Just as you're about to give up, you spot a hole in the ceiling tiles, mostly obscured by shadows in the corner of the room. Go to clue 70. Go through the hole in the ceiling by drawing clue 70. That is your only option. Clue 70, the hole... Is gaping. <laughs> the gaping, dark, smelly hole That's kinda opens wet. into a vertical shaft with haphazardly placed handholds like a climbing wall. You've found a secret passage. 
Required challenge. Stroke the shaft. Actually, it says ascend the shaft. And this is a uh, man climbing symbol. You got any of those? No. No. Four plus. Huge bird burglar. Raise the danger meter by two and try again. Uh-oh. Holy shit. Oops. Fail! Range the danger meter by two and try again. Fail! Range the danger meter by two. Way to go, Kirk. You just fucked us. Our psychic power went from like 20 to 3. Sorry about that. We were like that. level 4, dude. We might have been level 5. Sorry about that. All right, try again. Yay! Yay! I get it on the 12th try. Lower the danger meter by one and draw clue 81. You've climbed 20 feet when your handholds suddenly recede into the wall and disappear. This isn't just any secret passage. Oh, real shaggy. It's a booby trap. Booby trap. Booby trap. Required challenge. Avoid falling. Not me. An eyeball. It's an eyeball. We got an eyeball. We got an eyeball. We got an eyeball. Yeah, plus two. Go, Sonia. Come on, do it. Save us. Three. Yay, we did it. Woo. Win. Lower the danger meter by one and draw clue 78. Clue 78, you found a ledge, but getting onto it is going to take some serious agility. Required challenge, a foot to get on the ledge quick. We got one, plus two, so seven. Yeah. Win! Win! Lower the danger Win! level by one and draw clue 73. Man, we would really be sitting pretty if, you know, Kirk didn't fuck us in the butthole. Fuck you. There's a passageway carved into the stone wall here, but somebody has piled up a bunch of rocks to block the entrance. Required challenge. <laughs> a bicep. Move all the rocks. Do you have a bicep? No. Uh-oh. And it's Kirk's turn. God and damn he it. fails. Lower the... Oh, lose. Raise the danger meter by two and try again. We win! We Lower win. the danger meter by one and draw clue 79. Clue 79. Halfway down the passage, you find a chimpanzee sitting at a desk. He's smoking cigarettes and watching TV. I mean porn. Edit here. <laughs> He's smoking cigarettes. Oh, wait. Edit here. Edit here. He's smoking a bong and watching porn. <laughs> he looks angry. Required challenge. Fuck the angry chimpanzee! <laughs> Go, Sonia. Go, Sonia. Is there a fist? Yep, yeah, there's a fist. There is a fist. <laughs> you're gonna get fisted. Now you're just mashing nice. it. Nice. Yay! Six. Win! Lower the danger meter by one and draw clue 75. Way to satisfy that chimpanzee, Sonia, with your fist. Good job. Like you ah, 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 ah. <laughs> 75, although not as satisfying as winning the banana monster. You run past the chimp and ride into a 10-foot guinea pig. <laughs> it's adorable. Guinea pig? And if, <laughs> it's adorable and it can kill you. Attack! Or sneak past it. Heave a table at it. Or find another solution. You have to conquer the guinea pig. Now your options are to use a foot, use a bicep, use a fucking man with limp wrists, or foot. an eyeball. You got plus two foot. Foot? So the foot one is sneaking past it. And we win! Lower the danger meter by two and draw clue 77. Key card! You see an access key card on the floor. You grab it and run through the doors in front of you, unsure of what's on the other side. Go to story card 69, dude. We did 69. Not with you. <laughs> 69, dude! You're now in a chamber with three prison cell doors. They're heavy iron things with small barred windows that make it difficult to see what might be inside. There's a ring of three keys hanging from a nail on the wall. You try cell A, or you could try cell B, or you could try cell C. It's a choice, people! A, a it a. is! A. Yeah, what the fuck, A? 
start at the beginning. <laughs> There's a sleeping figure in cell A, curled up with his back towards you. You, look a little you can wake up the prisoner and try talking to him. Attempt to subdue him before he gets the opportunity to attack you, or just leave. Leave. Yeah, I guess. Just leave. You'd rather skip the whole thing like pussies and leave the cell. Return to story card 69. 69. Cell A, B, or C? B. Let's go with B. Big boy. What are we looking for? I have just no. the prisoner, right? Prison just prisoner. sex. I think we just found it. Prison butt sex. Cell B is empty. Search all you want. There's nothing here but syphilis. C. I made the syphilis part up, if anybody could tell. Somebody's sleeping on the cot in cell C with a thin blanket pulled over their face. You can wake the prisoner up. You can talk to him. I'm sorry. You can wake him up and talk to him. Attack him before he can attack you or just tiptoe out of the cell. Wake him up. Up. Wake his ass up! If you try talking to the prisoner, draw clue 67. Clue 67. You gently shake the prisoner by the shoulder. He flings the blanket from his face. It's an exhausted looking man who's obviously relieved that somebody's finally come to rescue him. Thank you. I'm Professor Marsden. Marsden, you ask? Are you related to Henry Marsden? Yes. This was the estate of my ancestor, General Marsden. But at the moment, we have more urgent things to discuss. Go to story card 90. Chapter 3, goal achieved! Professor Marsden was worried! You have to help me stop my former research assistant. He says? She's twisted our scientific researchers for evil. So she's responsible evil? for all these chimps, you ask? Yes, but there's something bigger afoot. I'm talking about... The alien science. Marston says he can provide you all the answers you're looking for, but you should first make sure you're prepared to leave the section of this house behind. He can give you explicit directions to important locations if you think you might have missed anything. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later in the story. You can take the risk and go back for any you missed by following these traces below. If you choose to go to the biochemistry lab and raise the danger meter by three, go to story card 78. You can crawl through the air duct the conference room, raise the danger meter by 3 and go to story card 65. If you go to the printing press room, raise the danger meter by 3 and go to story card 64. If you head to the generator room, raise the danger meter by... <laughs> Stranger <laughs> danger meter? Raise the danger meter by 3 and go to story card 72. Otherwise, you may advance to chapter 4. Keep all inventory items. Generator or printing press? We were in the printing press room. Did we? Yeah, that was the bananas. Uh, oh, they were making money right. out of bananas. Making money. Alright, let's go to the generator then. Generator. The generator, was that the room with the crystal? That's the room that had the, the cracked generator that was sparking that we went through the tunnel instead. Were you guys in the biochemistry lab? Oh. Yeah, you've definitely been to 72. I think we're good then. 78 right. has not been done. Which one is 78? 78 is the, one the biochemistry after 77. Lab. Was it? You have not been to 64, which is the printing press room. Sonia. She wants to go to sleep. A we, hole in the wall we where got the 20 boys minutes. can see it all. You want to just be done? Let's go. Yep. Okay, that's fine. That's it. Goal achieved. Alright, guys. Hope you enjoyed our fun little choose-your-own-adventure game. Tune in the next time when one of us is sick. <laughs> and we'll play House of Danger again. <laughs> Until then, this has been Kirk. Nick. Sonia. And Arn. See ya. Bye, everybody. Adios. All right, welcome back to House of Danger. We're at this is episode four. Hi, everybody. I'm Nick. I'm Kirk. Arn. Shannon. Sonia. I did learn to read in public school, so I'll see how, how well this goes. Okay, public school in Nebraska or Council Bluffs? Council Bluffs, oh, baby. Oh, shit. Oh, my. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, so everybody take... So what is the chemical composition of methamphetamines? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody take two minutes, look at the card again, Just discuss kidding. what you see. Just Easy. kidding, Iowa. We love you. I'm not kidding. I know you're not.
You just have to study the picture. Can you see it? Yeah, it goes on with the rest of the it's story. It's like a clue. The more I look, the more I see. Okay. You good? I'm good. All right, not quite two All minutes. Right. But... All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're not very high on the psychic scale. Thanks. To Kirk. Yeah. My bad, guys. My bad. But our danger meter's down to two. You really drove us into the ground there. Yeah. I blame you. All right. So we got Here we go. <laughs> All right. The Hideout, Chapter 4. After encountering dangers outside the house, facing multiple ghosts inside the house, discovering an underground laboratory, and stumbling upon angry chimpanzees, you're ready to get some answers about this place <laughs> and the nightmares that brought you here. The mysterious phone call I got this morning, you say. It was you, wasn't it? Phone call? What phone call? Wait. It couldn't have found a way to access the phone lines, could it? Professor Martin's eyes go wide. Then he sees the look on your face and shakes his head. Well, that's not important right now, he says. Something about his tone leads you to suspect it is important, but you don't push it. If you've managed to get this far, you must be quite the aspiring detective. And psychic investigator, you add. You go on to tell him about the recurring nightmares that drove you to delve into this whole bizarre mystery. Nightmares, he asks? Fascinating. If your dreams mean what I think they do, then I'm glad you're here. I can explain more later, but right now, getting to the neuron inhibitor mainframe is the crucial thing. It's the only way to retake the lab from my dastardly former lab assistant, Carol. He says the name in a hoarse whisper as if speaking it aloud could summon some ancient evil. <laughs> Together, we discovered a source of technology far Carol. beyond anything this world has ever seen, but she betrayed me. She used our work to take control of the chimpanzees and start a counterfeiting ring with a local crime syndicate. We made scientific discoveries worthy of Einstein, of Galileo, and then she uses it all to... He trails off. Make I'm money with mon monkeys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been locked in here so long that I've forgotten my manners. Now that you've freed me, I can open a secret passage for you that will lead to the neuron inhibitor mainframe. It will take you through the area where our most experimental work was being conducted. Be careful. It can get dangerous in there. It's just me who's going? You ask with a fear in your voice. Yes, he says, I'll need to monitor your progress from the operations room, where I have access to the security system. Here, use this earpiece so we can communicate. Draw clue 91 to discover your goal. Chapter 4 goal, disable the neuron inhibitor mainframe. The clear glass door leads to the temporal manipulation lab, the professor continues. The frosted glass door goes to the psychic development room. The professor takes off for the operations room as the secret passage opens from the empty jail cell next door. The two glass doors are now before you. Too bad the professor didn't explain which route was the best way to get to the neuron inhibitor mainframe. If you try to the temporal manipulation lab, go to story card 96. If you try the psychic development room, go to 115. I think we'll go with the psychic development room. Heck yeah. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah. All right. This room features several rows of blue metal chairs. Dome-shaped helmets attached to odd-looking devices hang above the chairs. There's also a large glass tube, big enough for you to step into, with a door on the side. A green button is accessible from inside the tube. You slowly realize you've seen these machines before, in photos, in the reference book Ghosts and Ghouls, which you have on your bookshelf at home. The photos were in a chapter about how rogue parapsychologists were attempting to give ordinary people psychic abilities. If you remember correctly, the blue chairs are attached to machines intended to give the subject pyrokinesis, the ability to start fires with mind control. The large glass tube is an energizing chamber that gives people telekinesis, the ability to move objects with one's mind. Both seem ready to go. A metal stairwell on the far side of the room leads to some sort of observation booth which overlooks the room you're in and possibly others. If you sit in one of the pyrokinesis chairs, go to 117. 
If you enter the telekinesis energizing chamber, go to 106. If you skip this weird equipment and climb the stairs to the observation booth, go to 99. I'm going to say pyrokinesis chair. Pyrokinesis That's exactly chair. That's exactly what I was going to say. Right. Yes. You know, because every time I pick something, we all die. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seemed like when I was reading. <laughs> You're dead. Go back to card 44. Arn gets built up by a Civil War general. It says... I'm on the wrong card. <laughs> See, it's just not me. <laughs> All right. You enter the energizing chamber and shut the door. You press the green button on the interior wall and the room goes dark, while the large glass tube emits a blinding white light, forcing you to cover your eyes with your hands. You can feel the machine rewiring your neural pathways to activate mysterious, previously untapped portions of your brain. The pain is horrible. Part of you thinks that if you can just endure the pain a little longer, unlimited mental powers might be unlocked. Another part of you is concerned that your head might literally explode. Like that scene in Scanners. <laughs> Are you level four or higher on the psychic scale? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not anymore. So we'll ignore Thanks, that. Thanks, Kirk. Do you stay in the energizing chamber, or do you get out? This feels freaking great. Let's stay here, guys. We're going to stay, right? Stay. Okay, draw clue 98. I will draw clue 98. You now have the power to move things with your mind. You think about this as you run for the observation booth. Once per challenge, you can raise the danger meter by two to re-roll a die roll. Keep this item. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. Go to score, story card 99. Story card. Story, story card. card. Story card, guys. <laughs> hey, I did good before I messed up. Okay. The observation booth has thick windows that look down into a circular chamber where you, where you see a human-sized chimp in a hospital gown sitting at a uh -oh. table. This never goes good, guys. <laughs> the poor animal's head is shaved and hugely swollen. Electrodes are attached to pulsing veins. The <laughs> boom, 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 I am boom, so boom, immature. Boom, boom. Veins on his head? Yeah. <laughs> he's shaved. <laughs> he's shaved <laughs> head. And he's, he's swollen and he's throbbing. Come on now. The chimp is gazing intently at a small wooden boat, which is floating in midair above the table. The chimpanzee sees you, and the moment his eyes meet yours, you start to black out. You break eye contact just before losing consciousness and decide you'd better exit this room quickly. Next to a fire extinguisher on the wall is a map, which gives you a quick overview of this area. You orient yourself and see that the observation booth is next to the cryogenics lab and the supercomputer room. Do you go to the cryogenics lab or the supercomputer room? Depends on how quickly we want to get this over with. <laughs> this is like a tongue twister. Should we go to the cryogenics now? I don't know. I think Nick wants to go to the chiro so chiro chiro <laughs> chiro I want to go to the chiropractic <laughs> lab. <laughs> it's like I, my back misaligned. I, I, I think we need to make this last longer than 15 minutes. muscular chimpanzees. <laughs> what was the other option? Computer, computer lab? Computer lab. Super computer lab. Because that's Room. where the mainframe probably is that we need to destroy. So let's go to the cryogenics okay. lab. Because <laughs> that always works out well. Cryogenics? Yes. 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 All right. I don't know where that rubber band went. <laughs> freeze, my, freeze my body so I can come back. 50 years. This room has cryogenic storage chambers built into the walls. All kinds of lab subjects are frozen inside. Mice, rats, dogs, cats, rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs, fish, and birds. There are, all, there are also three large glass pods in the center of the room, each big enough for a person to get inside. One of them might be occupied. The glass is frosted, so you can't be sure. As you inspect that pod, you accidentally hit a button, and the pod unlocks with a rush of cold air. However, its door remains frozen shut. You can attempt to pry it open if you want to. Don't touch it with your hands. Pry it open with a knife. Yeah, that, smell, that sounds good. 
Optional challenge. Open the cryogenic Tell pod. Can it open? We're gonna do the challenge. Fuck yeah, we're gonna do the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> it's not optional. What Don't kind of challenge it. is it? Sometimes they have little symbols like arms and you know, arms. Shit. It's a muscle challenge. We got that one. Uh, no. no, we do God. not. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go for it. All right. We're on a three plus or a four plus. Well, we yeah. got it either way. I rolled a four. That's a win. Draw clue ninety. <sighs> Don't put it Clue out. 90 is a crystal pennant. A pe- pendant. <laughs> a pennant? <laughs> wow, nobody can talk to me. Do we want to read all that? Oh, yeah. Read it. <laughs> With your council bluffs education. You pry open the pod and find there's no animal, <laughs> only a crystal pendant. It's glowing, and it's warm to the touch. Your psychic senses tell you that this is an important item. Keep this item. Move forward one space on the psychic scale. Finish my story card. When you're ready to leave, there's an open, debris-filled hallway at one end of the room. At the other end is a stairway leading up to an unseen location. Which way do you want to go? Over the debris into the hall or up the stairs? I think we want to go up the stairs. Yeah, that's fine. Up the stairs? Up the stairs. stairs. Alright, let's go up the stairs. Okay. You go up a long flight of stairs that leads to an observatory where you find Professor Marsden staring at the stars. How did you get here first, you ask? It's all my fault, he murmurs sadly, Uh lost in thought. We've reached out to the stars, and they reached back. But when the creature made contact, we got greedy and captured him for further study. Uh-oh. I fear your nightmares mean he's sending out telepathic messages in hope of being rescued. If you want them to end, you must set the creature free. This is why, the professor continues, we need to take back the compound from Carol. Disable the neuron inhibitor oh, mainframe man. controlling the chimpanzees and free the alien ambassador been watching too much wrestling i thought he was gonna turn on us <laughs> carol watches over the mainframe constantly he continues so you'll be heading into great danger make sure you're fully prepared before you move on there's a hallway to the mess hall and a back door that leads outside the house story return if you'd like to go back for anything you missed make a choice below the temporal manipulation lab if you want to go to the psychic development room, if you want to go we to we want to go to the psychic development room. <laughs> okay. Sold. <laughs> then raise the danger meter by three. Oh fuck! Oh great. I ain't rolling. We're cool. Just I ain't a four. Rolling. We're I ain't, cool. I ain't rolling. You have to get a four, five, or six. It's fine. You have to write card. It's I fine. don't. Am I, am I rolling? I think no. we need that. No, not up. yet. Not yet. It just so, went up. I think we need that pyrokinesis, and now we got it. Hopefully. Hey, shouldn't we be at five? We went up to four, and then we, we were went at up three. one more. We were at three. Oh, no, one, psychic, two, three. psychic so scale psychic should scale. be up to five. Oh. Okay. Who put you in charge? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> put me in charge. Nobody else wanted it. <clears throat> there it is. Wait, that's what we did. <laughs> yep. That's the telekinesis one. Are you fucking with me? No, I wanted to go get the fire one. <laughs> I think that is... Can I make a mistake? Oh, can you do that? I don't know. I don't do think what? so. Can we get, go back and get more power? Well, you guys went into the telekinesis one. Um, so there's a pyrokinesis chair. Can we just go back and do that? Did we do the pyrokinesis chair? No, we, we tried didn't. and we failed. Oh, well, let's try it again. All right, let's try it again. As soon as you sit down on the cold metal seat, a dome helmet drops onto your head and begins rewiring Uh, your neural pathways to activate mysterious, previously untapped portions of your brain. It's fun! And more importantly, it gives you the ability to create fire with a simple thought. Creating fire is easy, but actually controlling it is a different story. 
In fact, once you've realized you've lit your shirt ablaze, all your panicked attempts to dimin- <laughs> diminish the flames with your mind only create more of them. You burn yourself up in mere seconds. Way to go, Arn. Something about fire, something about fire, something about fire. <laughs> ah, 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 it's hot! <laughs> uh, fire extinguisher. Do we have a fire extinguisher? Where is the fire extinguisher? No, I think oh, we use that. that. The, <laughs> we have a the water bottle. <laughs> Don't worry, I emailed about it. No, I think you're done. You died. You're dead. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> Way to go, Warren. Move back two spaces on the psychic scale and return to story card 115. I think basically we're back to where we were at the beginning, uh-huh. except the danger meter's up. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right. Somebody else gets to make the next decision. <laughs> okay. Um, The temporal manipulation lab, the armory... Or the observation booth, which I thought we went to, but... Or if you want to go to the mess hall, we could go forward. Armory? Armory. Armory, 94. <laughs> Armory. It's not going to end well. It just doesn't sound like a good idea. we got to go fight these things. Well, we already fried ourselves, so <laughs> why not shoot ourselves, too? <laughs> sure, why not? We could go to the observatory. See, we could set ourselves on fire, and then we can shoot ourselves to put us out of our misery. <laughs> Psychic jerky. All right. You enter the armory. The door is cl- the door closes behind you, and then you hear it lock automatically. The room is nearly empty, and you realize with a shudder that whatever weapons are usually kept here are probably in the hands of the people or chimps roaming the halls outside. The only thing left is a massive artillery gun mounted on a swivel in the center of the room. There are also a bunch of lockers lining one wall, if you'd like to search through them. Optional challenge. Search the lockers. If you are a level three or higher on the psychic scale, add a one to we your are. roll. No, we're level one. We are level one. Psychic. No, we're level six. Level three. Oh, that thing. Right. Oh, the lockers. Four, the lockers are in. The... Wow, you really Jesus. fucked us over last uh, time. Okay, yeah. Captain Kirk. Me. Well, look what I just rolled. Uh oh. We, we can roll again if we need to. That happened like three Ooh. weeks ago, so we're done with that. <laughs> yeah, we're not re-rolling it. Raise danger meter by two. Oh, we're not shit. trying again? Nope. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> nice job with those new dice hitting that one. Yay, new dice. Yay, new dice. <laughs> they're pretty. Mine are the same. At least they're pretty. <laughs> There's a door here, and you can see through its window that it leads to a stairwell. Unfortunately, this door is locked. The artillery gun you found has a shell in it, though. (laughs) Has a shell in it, though. So you could probably blast your way through. As a matter of fact, why limit yourself? With that thing, you could probably get through the wall opposite the door. Instant shortcut. If you blow a hole through the door, we'll go that way. If you blow a hole through the wall... We'll go the other way. Just blow a hole through the wall. Yes, yeah, do Sounds that. Sounds more destructive. Yeah. Blow, blow shit hole. up. Blow shit up. Blow hole. Blow hole. Blow hole. You carefully navigate stray chunks of masonry and find yourself in a laboratory. A laboratory. <laughs> Didi, get out of my laboratory! <laughs> Freddy does not like you. <laughs> There's a closet-sized metal box here. Big enough for you to get into, connected to a computer terminal. Some notes you find scattered on a desktop contain terms like DNA decoding unit and cellular replicator. You know what this thing is for. Clones. It makes clones. You're sure of it. Well, 90% sure. Clones or clowns? Hello. <laughs> Maybe clones of clowns. <laughs> There's a flashing red light on the terminal that might mean something's not working properly, but the computer is so old it uses punch cards. You just know that trying to figure out what's wrong with this computer would be a huge pain. There's a time clock on the wall above a column of time cards with a handwritten index card that says Observatory Employees. Next to it is a stairway leading upwards. Free action! If you are at level four or higher on the psychic scale, (laughs) (laughs) so we can't do that. Would you like to try and clone yourself or take the stairs to the observatory? There should be more of me around. I think that would be awesome. I think we should try, but 
probably the, not the right thing I to do. I don't think we should. I don't think we should. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Boring. Boring, Boring crowd. Right. We're going to end up like some mutant banana or something. Mutant banana? Chlorophyll. Yeah. More like borophyll. Well, 108 takes you back to where Professor Marsden is. So, I think, do we do the observation booth? Nope. We have not. Would you like to? Yes. Let's do it. Sure, because the card's not in the main pile. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Maybe we did do it. Is that where we talked to the doctor? He tells us we must set the throbbing head free. That's the... (sighs) Psychic chimpanzee on 99, so I think we're done with going back. I'll wasn't put there, these back in order. Wasn't there another way from the chimpanzee? Wasn't there like. Oh! We haven't gone to the mess hall yet. That's like the end game, I think, isn't it? Um. No. Cryogenics or supercomputer room? Yeah, supercomputer super computer room. room. Boom. Boom. Didn't, weren't we just there? Everything's run nope. off of a card. No. Oh. No, we went That's to the, the cryogenic cloning room. Oh, the That's clone. the cloning room where you guys didn't want to clone me. I'm awesome. I don't know why you didn't want to clone me. One of you is enough. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. I'm going to start turning the cards here. Just... <laughs> We're not having multiplicity going on here. You ready? ready? I practiced for, this for a long time with my daughter. Okay. As soon as you enter the room, I slap em. the computer lights up. Present your credentials. A digital voice demands. It Bee-boo, must be the Bee-boo. computer. Beeboo, beeboo. <laughs> you mutter something about being the new lab assistant. I judge that to be false. You have come here seeking answers. My memory banks contain all the information you desire, but access is forbidden. You don't see a keyboard, so apparently voice commands are the only way to interact with this thing. Unless, of course, you can best me in a competition of my choosing. The computer continues. This always ends well. (laughs) Shall we play a game? Be wary, human. No flesh creature has ever defeated me and my limitless mind. If you agree to compete with the supercomputer, draw Clue 97. Yeah. I'm just going to grab the clue. Let's play. A compartment opens in the computer's casing, and a robotic arm extends from inside it. The supercomputer wants to arm wrestle you. Required <laughs> challenge. All right, Sony. And, and we have no ready to arm wrestle, stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a strength challenge. So, do you have to do this until you beat it? If it's required. Oh, no. Okay. So you have to do it once. Yep. Yeah. Oh God. Ooh. I don't know. It says raise the danger meter by one and try again. I think Ooh. we have to keep going. Somebody else want to get a five or oh, six? Oh no, that's on you. See if you can beat Kirk's record. Oh, hey, oh, got it. Hey. Woo. Draw clue one o two. Three rolls less than I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you defeat the supercomputer and gain access to its files. One is a diagram of a rod-shaped device called a quantum synthesis stabilizer. Do you have clue 39? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Keep this item and move forward two spaces on the psychic scale. Woo! It's the one that looks like the deal fails. Fail. <laughs> well, this would have been helpful. There are two doors leading out of the supercomputer room. You start to open one door, and the computer shouts, Do not attempt to enter the armory! You start to open the other door, and the computer shouts, Do not attempt to enter the observatory! This computer may be pushy, but it's also quite informative. I think we gotta go to the observatory, because we've done everything else, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) We're a podcast, guys. (laughs) We're a podcast, guys. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can you hear my head shaking? Very, shaking? very cold, and we're all very, very tired. <laughs> it is very cold here today, yes. Very, very. So, do we want to go to the mess hall or leave the house through the back door? Let's go to the mess hall. Let's just go home. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your alien, we're leaving. 
Yeah, take the back door. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> yes, I don't know. Where do you want to go? Well, mess hall. Let's go to the mess hall. Mess hall. I think that's the only room we haven't been in yet. You died. You choke on a Sam sandwich. The mess a hall Sam is filled sandwich. with long... A Sam sandwich. Well, you're going to choke on something. Oh, shit. <laughs> the mess hall is filled with long metal tables and ugly plastic chairs. Judging by the sheer volume of rotting banana peels piled into overflowing trash cans, you'd guess that it's mostly used by chimpanzees. Chimpanzees who don't compost, but I'm tss. The room has high ceilings, and you can see an area on the next level with a railed balcony that overlooks the room. There might be something interesting up there, but you'll have to climb to find out. There's also a door that leads to the pantry, in which you see a cupboard. Optional challenge! Climb to the overlook. What kind of skill is it? Climbing. Oh, hey, we got climbing. We got climbing, shit. don't we? No. What? What? I thought we did. No. Not mm. the tracksuit? It's a purple guy supplely caressing a rock. Instant win. <laughs> Are we going to skip climbing? No. Yeah. I don't know, Nick. It's your roll. I yeah. ain't rolling it. Yeah. Let's do it. What's the worst that can happen? Right. <laughs> We'll fall. We'll fall, yep. Yeah, we made it. Lower a danger meter by three. Nice. Go to story card 111. From here, you can see into a meeting room, which is packed to the gills with super chimps. A woman in a lab coat, it must be the diabolical Carol, is operating a... Carol. Is operating a large console that must be part of the neuron inhibitor mainframe. It looks pretty solid, but if you're lucky, you might be able to reach it and damage it enough to free the chimps from Carol's control before anything can stop you. There's also a metal staircase leading down to an aircraft hangar. You see a truck parked in it, but you can't be sure if anyone is guarding it. Do you guys see Carol? <laughs> Bride of Frankenstein! <laughs> if you rush into the meeting room, go to that card. If you sneak into the aircraft hangar... We gotta disable the, <laughs> the neural whatever inhibitor mainframe. Is it on board the plane? How do we know that's what she's using? That's true. It looks like she's using it, so you can't be sure. Sony, what do you think? What do you think, Sony? Huh? I say we go to the airplane. Sure. Everyone we agree, so we do it. We go to the airplane. You sneak into the hangar and discover to your great relief that it's unoccupied. There are parts here from what might be some kind of alien aircraft, and tools lie scattered around them on the floor. From here, you can see a large egg-shaped object on the lawn outside the hangar. Optional challenge! Scan the tools for something useful. If you are a level 4 or higher on the psychic scale, yeah. add 1 to your roll. In, in addition to any eyeball We got binoculars. Boosters. I think those help. Binox. Yep. yep. Alright. It's a plus 2. Yeah. All this right. is your turn, I think. Alright. Do it. You can do it. Don't fuck us over this time. Almost. God damn it. Well, he got two. two. So oh. Good job! Good job! I think good job! <laughs> <laughs> I knew you could do it! <laughs> Freaking Draw out clue over 89. Oh, didn't we already draw clue 89? Nope, we didn't. No, we did not. Ooh. It was out of order. You find a small gun that fires tear gas. Neato! Keep this item. An hey, it's got a fist. Yeah. It's going to be fisting somebody. You can fist him with tear gas. An unmarked delivery truck is parked here. If only the keys were inside. Maybe we have the keys. Well, we have that skeleton key. It says if you have clue three, discard it and go to story card 100. We don't have clue three. Nah. If you don't have it, take a look at the egg ship by going to story card 114. Right. 
You sneak over to the big round object. This thing is a spaceship. It has a cold ceramic skin and it's perfectly smooth. You can't find a single bolt or seam. Frictionless? Yep. <laughs> From here, you can see a window to the main house where a whole bunch of chimpanzees are gathered around a boardroom table with a woman at the front of the room at a computer console. It's Carol. 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 First things first, you climb aboard the egg. <laughs> I was fine. <laughs> First things first, you climb aboard the egg craft, look at the instruments, and get to the psych get the psychic <sighs> sensation that you already possess the knowledge to operate the vehicle. There's a mental lock protecting the control panel, though. God. <laughs> if you could bust I it, know Kung Fu. you might be able to get this thing moving. Let's bust it. Optional challenge. Break the lock. Do you have a muscle thing? We have a fist. Yep. Nope, it's not a fist. fist. It's ah, a bicep. Nope. It's a bicep. We don't need it. We don't need no stinking fist. I rolled a oh, one. Way to go, Arn. Oh, Raise danger meter by three. Oh, oh, sh- oh, try again. Oh. No, let's try again. Let's let's do that thing. Raise the danger meter by... Oh, it's the same. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't get the egg ship moving or don't even want to try, you can always move on. Head straight into the room full of chimps by going to 103. Fuck. Tear gas them. <laughs> Tear gas the motherfuckers. Family friendly. Jeez. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> oh, crap. We're dead again. Mother truckers. We are dead again. The dramatic conclusion to all this monkey business is so close you can practically reach out and touch it. One way or the other, you decide. This ends now. You burst into the room. At least three dozen giant chips stand between you and the neuron inhibited inhibitor mainframe. Seriously, can we use the tear gas? Also, you totally hit your funny bone on the way in. <laughs> so that's going on, too. This, you realize, was a terrible idea. Kill the intruder! The woman yells. Duh. <laughs> With her neuron inhibitor link still fully operational, the chimps have no choice but to obey, which they do. Tear gas! Move back two spaces on the psychic scale and return to the previous card. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but. Don't let me pick! Don't let me pick ever. <laughs> you got. you. The previous card is the egg ship. Yeah, we gotta try the egg ship. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get to the egg ship. <laughs> <laughs> so Who's rolling for the egg ship? You have to roll five or six. Is that yeah. what's that's going what's on? That's what's going on, yeah. There oh, hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Draw clue 101. Clue 101. 10101. Through brute force, you managed to break the lock, but you damaged the ship's controls in the process. You're tossed from the cockpit as the vehicle lurches a few inches into the air and rockets across the lawn, straight towards the room of, full of chimpanzees. Go to 107. So we win, but we don't win. There's a large, sliding glass door that opens into the meeting room, but the egg-shaped, sh- egg-shaped ship misses it entirely and crashes straight through the wall. A space cannon emerges from a hatch in the ship's hull and starts firing laser beams at random into the room. The chimps go bananas. It's total chaos. (laughs) Bananas. (laughs) You couldn't have created a better distraction if you'd planned it. You jump out of the ship. You move quickly and stealthily and somehow manage to avoid the rampaging chimps and the uncontrolled laser fire. Maybe you can disable the neuron inhibitor mainframe before anyone stops you. Required challenge. Do you have a run issue? Yes. Yes, we do. So, yeah. Plus so, two. Plus two. All to right, your it's roll. my roll? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nervous. Yay! Yeah, we, we got it! it. <laughs> we got it! Yeah! <laughs> Go to story card 113. The computer doesn't have a button that's clearly labeled off, so you hit the neuron inhibitor mainframe console as hard as you can with a chair, and sparks fly from it. Every chimpanzee in the room instantly passes out and falls to the floor. 
The egg ship has apparently run out of laser juice, too, because the cannon sputters and lowers back into its hatch. Carol, however, is still a problem. My computer, she screams. My chimpanzees. My meeting room wall. Who even are you? That's how it's written. <laughs> she, went, she went from <laughs> Russian to <laughs> Valley to Girl. Valley Girl. I can't read who even are you without adding that. It's terrible. She flies at you in a rage. She ah! definitely wants to kill you, and she seems to be giving it everything she's got. Required challenge, knock out the dastardly Carol. Shoot her in the face with a tear gas gun. Yeah, Carol. Carol. Oh, it's a punch. Hey. A fist. And we've got that knife. Got Fister. The other hand. And we can stab her. <laughs> we want to use the tear gas gun because it's got a plus two. Yes. Yes. A minute. Yes. Go to story card 105. Huh? What is it with everybody rolling threes? Average. Yeah. I have story 105. <laughs> See, it's, one not, of it's just not me, all right? <laughs> so many Picking numbers. On me all night that and night. reading and talking. I'm still bruised. Chapter 4, goal achieved. Dun, 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 dun. You've thwarted Carol's evil plot. Freed a whole mansion full of super intelligent Take that chimpanzees. Carol. And broken up a counterfeiting ring. On top of that, you've helped Professor Marsden win back control of his lab. Now he'll have plenty of time to reconsider the implications of his blind pursuit of knowledge and devote the rest of his career to making things right again. All that's left now is to bask in your supreme triumph. You sit in Carol's chair, <laughs> lean back, and put your feet up on what remains of the meeting room table. Confident that your job here is done. Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. An alarm sounds, and about 50 <laughs> lights on the neuron inhibitor mainframe console start blinking. <laughs> Professor Marsden comes running into the room. <laughs> oh no, he mutters under his breath. That thing's probably just malfunctioning, you say. I really did a number on it. You both jolt back as a strange, booming voice comes from a speaker on the neuron inhibitor mainframe console. The full force of the Chrysalic Armada is upon you, it says. We demand the release of our ambassador. Although we hate violence, we will reduce your entire planet to galactic rubble if you do not obey us. The significance of this moment hits you. You've just heard the words of an actual alien life form. Oh my god, they're Professor, real, guys! As pale as a ghost. Let's release the alien, you say. Yes. That's what we were planning to do anyway, right? Let's release it. Yep. About that, he says. Oh, shit. It may not be quite so simple. Oh. <gasps> Tune in next time. What could happen next time? Next time. I don't know. What we could die. happen? Will we save little Jimmy Willikers? <laughs> Will I ever get these cards back in the right order? Tune in to find I out. I think the alien should be Splooge Julius. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't master that. I had to go with cone heads, kind of. <laughs> Splooge. I know a Splooge. And guess what? You don't even have to wait. So it's coming up next. Because we're releasing this all in one day. <laughs> That's because we love you. And we're going to release them all together. Yeah. All yeah. right, guys. It's been fun. Yeah, boy. Bye. Yeah. See you guys. Bye. All right, everybody, welcome to episode five of House of Danger. Welcome back, everybody. What's going to happen? The penultimate episode. Oh, will we finally talk to the aliens? There's no such things as aliens. What? Will we live? Will the chimps leave the compound and form a... We should build a Congress? wall. Congress? Keep these Communes. aliens out. 
A group of chimpanzee or gorillas is called a congress. Did you know that? I did not know that. Hey, hey, yes. On. What? The penultimate chapter five. Chapter five. I got a thing. We all have things. <laughs> I gotta go use mine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to redo the intro. <laughs> Chapter 5, The Invasion You've crossed the deadly estate surrounding the Marzen House, come face to face with spirits from beyond the grave, and found yourself at the mercy of strange scientific experiments. You've fought oversized, superintelligent chimpanzees, freed them from mind control, and discovered a counterfeiting ring. Along the way, Ooh, now a fleet of UFOs <laughs> is barreling towards Earth, and unless... You can free the imprisoned alien ambassador before they arrive. The entire planet is doomed. Oh, no. That's okay. We've already done enough damage. It's it's our penance. The alien is locked away in the old prison beneath the mansion, Professor Marsden says. It's a dangerous labyrinth and not easily navigated. What are you talking about? There are three cells in that place. We were there 45 minutes ago. That's the new prison, the professor says. Where antisocial chimpanzees are held until they can be rehabilitated. The entire compound is built over the ruins of the old prison, which burnt down more than a century ago. My great-great-grandfather was the warden. You remember your strange out-of-body visions in the elevator, and the deep sense of foreboding that came with them. We should never have put him down there, the professor says. <laughs> <laughs> we should never put him down there, the professor says. The prison has always been a horrible, cursed place, but now that the creature has found a way to make contact with the world outside his cell. Wait a minute, you say. This alien ambassador isn't just responsible for my nightmares, is he? The alien was the one who called me this morning. But how did he even find me? The phone book is full of private investigators from far more experience than I have. You suddenly remember, however, that your Yellow Pages ad doesn't list you as an inspiring detective. It lists you as a psychic investigator. What? What? I bet he gets a lot of jobs. <laughs> what? <laughs> Psych. What's up, Sean? What's up, Gus? I'll find the alien, you say. Reassure yourself as much as the professor. I was born to do this. Before you can respond, the professor notices something on the mainframe console and gasps. The alien armada will enter the Earth's atmosphere in just 20 minutes. You must find the alien bastard and free him quickly, or all is lost. Draw Clue 108 to discover your gold. Clue 108, drawing. You don't have Clue 108. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the rubber band either, so <laughs> kiss my A. Chapter 5 Goal. Release Family the friendly ass. <laughs> An attempt to save planet Earth from getting bungholed. Let's Bung just uh, let it happen. Yo. Welcome annihilation. Are you threatening me? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, you say. You've been down there before, right? Do you have a map? No. We Carol handed man. it all. Carol. Carol handed all that. All I know is there's no two ways to get out of the structure. Through the original prison entrance, through the back of the house, and through a long, dark hallway that I've always been too afraid to investigate. Don't forget, keep your earpiece tuned on. Keep your earpiece turned on so we can communicate. We have earpieces. What do you have an earpiece? He uh, gave us one in the observatory. Did he really? I read really fast. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was like, so when long did ago, we get I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> if you head to the prison entrance, go to story card one twenty-seven. If you think the hallway is a better bet. Go to story card 133. Prison. Yeah, I'm, let's go there. I'm too fragile to go to prison. <laughs> yeah, let's go. It's not fragile, yeah, it's pretty. I agree. You know what they do to guys like me in prison? <laughs> I love it. Watch your car in a hole. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. You find the entrance to the old prison through the abandoned section of the house. The boards that were nailed up to keep people out of the mostly <clears throat> rotted away, and they were put up at least 50 years after the fire. You can hardly imagine that what kind of shape the prison itself is in. You pry the boards off and carefully step into the room. This must have been some kind of check-in area for prison guards and other employees. 
There's a large hole carved in one wall, which opens into a rough stone tunnel. There are also two doors, but only the wooden one opens. And the other is sealed tight with an unusual lock that has a small, round, gem-shaped indention where the keyhole ought to be. We have a key! We do have a key. But there's no keyhole? If you have clue 50... Nope. Fail. Epic fail. Use it to open the car, the locked door. If you crawl through the hole in the wall, go to story card 142. And if you try the wooden door, go to 126. I think we should try the wooden door first. Seems logical. I was yeah. going to say, that's a logical choice, but I kind of want to crawl into the hole. But I'll go with the door. <laughs> I'm sure I, there's going to be some reason for us to have to we, crawl through the door. I, I, yeah. I vote we go in the door. You we find yourself in a room filled with old filing cabinets. Oh, God, we're so dead. So awesome. We're in the records room. We're dead. They're metal. So they made it through metal. the fire <laughs> that destroyed the prison so long ago without too much damage. They're also flying around the room all on their own, slamming open and shut at mm-hmm. random intervals. You now realize why Professor Mars had never wanted to come down here. This place is super haunted. There's a burnt out hallway on the other side of the room, as well as an old rope and pulley elevator that servants might have used. But you're going to have to get past a bunch of angry filing cabinets to get to the to get to either exit. Required challenge: dodge the flying file cabinets. Win: lower danger meter by three. Lose: raise danger meter by three. I'll roll. What I'll kind roll. of challenge is it? Foot. Foot challenge. Do we have any feet? Yep. Plus two. Yeah. Fail. Six. <laughs> Yay, we made it. Yay. Yay, we made it. We did it, guys. Yay. If you head Yay. down the hallway, go to story card 130. God, you take we are the rope quiet. You made a roll. Out. We're quiet. God. <laughs> Draw clue 118. Try it. You 118. Get clue, or you want to go down the hallway? Metal. Pulley. Pull a 118. Pull my 118? <laughs> you climb inside the elevator and grab the rope dangling in front of you. As you pull down sharply, then again and again, the elevator slowly descends. Finally, you reach the next floor down. Step out the elevator and walk into the room. Go to story card 131. You win! We won! Woohoo! Game over. Nicks are always short. <laughs> the room is filled with sheets and blankets that have apparently been brought to life somehow. They're floating through the air like some sort of phony ghost you might have Cut seen em. in the elementary school. Slap it. Burn them. It's the least scary thing you've ever seen. <laughs> this whole time Pretty you've much. been exploring the Mars and Residence, and possibly your entire life. There are quite a few of them, although... There are quite a few of them, though, which makes it hard to get a clear view on the room. As you stumble through, you get a sock in the face by blankets over and over again. Ow, 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 oh, it hurts so bad. Ow, oh, it hurts. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. Ow, God. Hey. Stop it. Ow, ow. No, you not sense, right there. You sense that there might be something Jeez. valuable in here. It could be worthwhile to search the room. Not the face. Optional challenge. Dodge the floating sheets and search the room. Win. Draw clue 180, 127. Lose. Raise danger meter by two. All right. What kind of challenge is it? Anything? But what? Okay, so it's plus two, Shannon. Nice. Six. All right. Draw clue one twenty-seven. Is the danger meter not moving? Not nope. yet. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> we found another battery. You find a nine volt battery on the battery. corner. Woo! John, 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 it could John. power a flashlight or a taser. Or this how long's it been <laughs> down here? Thing. In, the in a room full of blankets, I think we know what that's for. We'll say it's. It, we'll say it looks like a uh, lightsaber since it's a family-friendly show. What brand of battery? Or who knows what else? It looks like a energizer or a Duracell. I lick I'm it. I'm buying it. She's gonna lick it. <laughs> He's like lube. <laughs> family-friendly lube. WD-40. Like oil. Okay, Okay. all right, all right. All right. I wasn't thinking family-friendly. I apologize. Not Astroglide. (laughs) I don't use that stuff. 
Mommy, we, we let's had to Astro the Glide. There's an open entryway through which you can see the steam heat generator in a boiler room. To the right of the entryway is a long handled door of a laundry chute. If you go to the boiler room, go to card story. That's story where Freddy Krueger's at. Let's go to the laundry chute. Jump down the chute, 154. Jump down the chute! Boiler room. That's not as fun. Boiler. Laundry I'm shoot. already outvoted. Laundry shoot. I'm already outvoted, so it's not going to matter. <laughs> she could have evened it. She could have, but she's not going to take my side. <laughs> you crawl inside and quickly find that it's impossible to get any traction. You tumble and slide down. What a about stupid idea. <laughs> right in the old prison incinerator. Oh, oh, shit. The good <laughs> news is it hasn't been lit for over a century. The bad news Yay. is the ghosts of a whole bunch of people who were killed by burning gather in one place. You often see a phenomenon that that paranormal researchers call ghost fire. Couldn't it be more like St. Elmo's fire? Elmo, I believe in And you may not know this, but ghost fire burns like crazy. <laughs> the end. Move like back three itch? spaces on the psychic scale <laughs> and return to your previous Christ. card. Way to go, guys! Way to go! I said the boiler room. You guys said to shoot. Now we're dead. Thanks. <laughs> go to the boiler sounded room. Like more fun. Yeah, burning what up. What happens if we're on zero? You were on right the for scale. once. <laughs> burning up is so much Relish fun. Relish it. It's all recorded. I was right. Hopefully, this, this episode is... won't be lost. You <laughs> were I right. I want it known. You're fucking phenomenal. That on Thursday. I'm sorry, you're effing phenomenal. January 24th at 7.47 p.m., Kirk was proved it's only right. 7.47. Card 122. There's a massive furnace here. It doesn't work anymore, God. but it survived the fire in good condition otherwise. The rest of the room is empty. You don't even see any ghosts, but some impulse tells you to look closer at the furnace. You spot something shiny inside. You can't tell what it's from where you're standing, but there's a room to crawl inside. That huge furnace, you're curious. This is your furnace room. Take it. Get in it's there. It's like the Home Alone furnace. It does look like the Home Alone If you alone try furnace. to grab the shiny thing inside the furnace... <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> go to story card 154. If you leave the furnace alone and head to the next room, go to 138. You better grab that shit. I'll try to grab the shit. Yeah! Thing. I hope it's a bear trap. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Takes off your fingers. Probably will. Probably kill Seriously? us. Seriously? 154? Really? We're, we're gonna kill it. It's gonna kill us. Wait, you can't find it? No. Here we are. <laughs> you crawl inside and quickly find that it's possible to get any traction. You tumble and slide down about 30 feet right into the old prison incinerator. <laughs> the good news is that it hasn't been lit in over a century. The bad news is what... <laughs> Is that when the ghosts of a whole bunch of people who were killed by burning <laughs> get in one place, you often see a phenomenon that really paranormal bad. researchers call ghost fire. Ghost fire burns, motherfucker! I'm, ah! I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Oh god! Way I'm to kill fire. us! You were right for three minutes. Three, three minutes. Woo! You're, you're correct. Your correction there is struck because it led to our death. I was bullied into going and getting it. <laughs> struck. Go back to card 138. All right. What yeah. happened when we die? We lose psychic stuff? Yes, but we can't because we're just... <laughs> we're down to one. We're down to one. <laughs> you just stop now. All right, the professor's... <laughs> the, the professor's voice comes over your communication earpiece. Where's my cock? <laughs> Watch out! That is the section of the prison where the most dangerous inmates are out. And one of the cells looks like it's been remodeled quite recently. It has lead panels covering some of the, <laughs> some of the original bars. <laughs> but though a small opening in the door, you see a crystalline entity levitating on the floor, <laughs> moaning softly. <laughs> it's the alien <laughs> ambassador! <laughs> <laughs> what is Professor Marsden doing with it? <laughs> At the top of the door, just below the ceiling, you see a high-tech look. God damn it. At the top of the door, you see the ceiling. You see a high-tech lock behind a thick layer of transparent material. Transparent aluminum? If you had something like a revolver, you could try shooting the lock open. 
<laughs> you would probably take a really careful aim and a really steady hand. I ain't rolling. Tear for gas. <laughs> yeah, <that's> Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to have to find another way into the cell. We have a key. We do have a key. We have a skeleton key. <laughs> Require challenge only if you have clue 63. Shit. Shoot. Shit. Uh, if you do not have clue 63, continue reading. There's a burned out corridor leading away from this area. Follow the corridor and see where it leads by going to star card 141. <laughs> <laughs> this is the old cafeteria, and dozens of ghost prisoners are milling around, along with a one frail looking female specter in tattered dress. At last, she says when she sees you, I have finally made contact with the other side. Uh, hi, you say. Uh, she puts a translucent hand on yours. I am the How's medium charged with shepherding the good lost spirits of their final resting places. Go forward to the light. Oh, Jesus. You don't belong nope. here with us. Nope. Don't go to the light, Carolan. But I'm, uh, but you're, you, you finally decide it's not worth arguing with her about which one of you is dead. The wall here is in bad shape. There's two died. holes big enough for you to fit in. Um... <laughs> One hole is We're not going to touch that one. <laughs> one hole is pitch black. And the other one is lit up with a green light. Don't go. Don't put it out with your boots, Ted. Go into the light. The ghost screams <laughs> as you contemplate your chances. Don't tell me what to do, devil woman. <laughs> Apparently the hole is only big enough for a finger. <laughs> if you go into the dark hole. Uh, <laughs> if you go into the dark hole. It's only pelvis height. <laughs> the dark hole, go to story card 135. If we go in the pink hole. <laughs> if you go into the slit up, 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 up hole. Family friendly's out the window go now. It's not my fault. I say we go into the dark, dark hole. Dark hole. <laughs> okay, let's Don't go to the dark hole. Dark hole. We need that lube. <laughs> Is it a tight fit? <laughs> Or is it like throwing a hot dog down the hallway? Why does it have duct tape around it? <laughs> oh my god. The tunnel leads to an exit high up on the wall of a large lead lined prison cell. Beneath you, the crystalline form of the. Chris. <sighs> the Chrysalic <sighs> Ambassador lies motionless on the floor. The Ambassador <sighs> looks up, sees you, and sends a telepathic message directly into your frontal lobes. <laughs> <laughs> Creature can pass through my impenetrable walls of my prison, he transmits. Whoever you are, have mercy and free me from this, too. <laughs> impenetrable walls? It's a tunnel, you'd think back at him. Have you even tried escaping? How long have you been down here? I am greatly weakened from my ordeal, the ambassador thinks at you. <laughs> also, it's really dark. <laughs> The only way out of the cell is back the way you came. So if you want to take the ambassador back to the surface with you, you're going to have to lift him into the tunnel. He is quite heavy. How heavy? Require challenge! Give the ambassador a boost. Can't that lazy asshole crawl himself? It's a... Stab no, him! It's a bicep. Anybody? You only got to hit a five or six. Woo! <laughs> Lower the danger meter by five and go to story Holy card 446. balls! I only roll yes. really well when it's a group effort. Yes! Yes! Oh, we needed that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> now we're only at a 50-50 we're shot. We're still only on level one of the psychic scale. Huh, what do I? Thanks. Hey! We were all the way to level five. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you dragged the crystalline alien back to the security room where the professor waits. On a monitor, you can see a giant UFO entering Earth's atmosphere. Hurry, the professor says oh in a panic. Oh my god! The armada is almost upon us! The alien ambassador rushes to the console. He pushes a button and makes a series of harsh noises only you can assume you can only assume is his native language. <laughs> if you have clue 90... <sighs> We do. You guys are 
guys were in it's unison. The that was <laughs> very disturbing. We do have clear 90. <laughs> and our level 1 through 3 on the psychic scale, draw 112. We 112. are 1 through 3. Oh, 112, Sonia. it might have worked out. 112, Sonia. 112. 112, Sonia. 112. 112. 112. 112. 112. 112. 112. 112. The pendant glows and makes a soft noise. So you bring it closer to your ear. It's the alien translator. As your ambassador screeches away, you hear the oh, following my, translation my in plain English. Am I that foolish? You always suspected nothing from planet extermination. What? What? Huh? I forgot huh? how to do the voice. Am I that foolish? You must suspect nothing. Proceed. <laughs> oh, wait. I, oh, there's a period. Okay. <laughs> The vile and foolish humans suspect nothing. Proceed with planetary exterminations. I repeat, kill them all. Oh, God. Way to let him out. I need pudding before I die. When he's finished, the alien sends you a telepathic message. Apple source. I have contacted my people. All is well. So now what, you ask? Go outside and await our arrival. He transmits. Do not fear them. We have forgiven all your transgressions and will not murder you or the rest of your species. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> species. I don't want to be probed. If you are level 5 on the psychic scale, eh, nope. Nope. If you are level 2 to 4, nope. nope. If you are level 2 to 4 on the psychic, nope. Nope. If you are level 1 on the psychic scale, <laughs> tr- draw clue 119. 119, Sonia. 119. 119. You know what the ambassador said? What? That's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the ambassador said, but something's giving you a funny feeling about it. Go to card 140. Are you sure everything's fine, you ask? Because the way you said it doesn't really sound like it's fine. The alien arranges his face into what might, what might be a crystalline scowl. Fine! Fine! Do you mean to ask whatever it's fine that I was locked in a dungeon for years? Probe them all! Well, your people! Tore my ship to pieces and store technology you and not advanced enough to use or understand. Um. Um. <laughs> doesn't say it's you. Um. um now that I think about it, your entire planet will die with your crimes. But the two of you in particular will truly suffer. Oh god, that can't be probed. The ambassador lunges at you. I got a virgin butthole. Require challenge! Fight the alien ambassador. Stab him! Win, move forward four spaces on the psychic scale. Go to story card 147. Oh shit. Lose. Okay. You raise. got this, Kurt? No, oh, Sony's good. gonna do it. Good. No, oh, whatever. It's a fist. It's a we, fist. We so got it's plus, plus two. two fists. Yay! Yay! Huzzah! You rush outside with the Stuck Professor that Justice tear gas gun up his anus. And fuck. Oh wait, it's a crystal <laughs> Does guy. Does he have he one? Might not have a butt. No. <laughs> you rush outside. He might with the not Professor have a... Just as a massive fleet of crystal and flying saucers descends through the clouds. If only I had finished assembling my doomsday device. The professor, lament, the professor laments. Wait a sec, you say? You were working on a doomsday device? Well, technically, what? it was a defense against doomsday devices. Dude's but device. if you point it in the wrong way, it will definitely blow up the planet. You really need to remember to point it in the right way. The largest of the alien ships stops the blow of the manor and hovers in midair. But it's all for nothing, the professor continues. Without my balanced conduction capacitor, my quantum synthesis stabilizer, and my hypersonic isotropic resonator, all is lost. Nice. Say that again. <laughs> Without my balanced conduction capacitor, my quantum synthesizer stabilizer, and my hyper-hypersonic isotropic resonator, all is lost. All right. Marty. Nice. If you have clues 92, 96, and 102. We have 102. We have 102. 102. If you have clues, you have one or two of the clues, go to card 143. What clues? 92, 96, and 102. 102. There's nothing we can do to stop them, the professor says, eyes wide. Earth is doomed. He glanced at an egg-shaped ship parked on the lawn. 
your eyes follow his. Instinctively, you both make a mad dash for the ship as the UFOs begin firing lasers down from above. This thing needs much more fuel and it's going to leave Earth's gravity. The professor sees... The professor says one of your... <laughs> what? The professor says once you're both inside. He frantically empties his pockets into an open compartment on the ship's dashboard as the ground outside the ship begins to buckle. Quick! Throw everything you've got into the fusion reactor! We have two 9-volt batteries. If you yeah, have, boy! If you have 12 or more clues with the phrase, keep this item in your inventory, go to card 151. If you have fewer than 12 clues with the phrase, keep this item in your inventory, go to card 152. Not all of those. One, two, three. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, 151. We abandoning Earth. Yeah. Chapter That's what five. It sounds That's what it like it's going to be like. us and that scientist in the middle of space. Thanks for all the fish. We're going to have to repopulate a, the moon <gasps> or something. Chapter five. Goal achieved. That should do it. You strap yourself into the seats and rocket through Earth's atmosphere just in time We're to gaze out of a porthole and see the planet break the apart and explode in a blinding flash of light. To Your ship city. is rocked by the resulting You're shockwave, right, but survived impact. I guess we're the only achievement left. We had to repopulate the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad they're not two breeders. One's not a breeder. <laughs> Everything. Everyone, you mutter. Unable to fully process the magnitude of what just happened. It's all gone. The professor's face is ashen. He suddenly flips open a little plastic cover on the console to reveal a button underneath. Someone has stuck a piece of masking tape under it with the handwritten words, Faster than light drive. He shoots you a questing glance. Punch it, you say. There's nothing here for you now. The professor pushes the button, and you head into the infinite vastness of the universe. And I'm sure of what of the fate airlock. awaits you. The end. Game over. Yay! Yay! I'm very unsatisfied Wait, is that with that. that a win? I don't know if it's a win. We lost our home planet. But we're, we're we got responsible call. for the death of billions of people. We are. There's, There's no point acting so ex surprised about it. Exterminating all sorts of animals. <laughs> Poor animals. Your planet has been slated to be demolished for an intergalactic highway. <laughs> Thank you for all the fish. Oh. We thought that most of you were sweet. <laughs> so what did everybody think? Fun? Sort of. It was a good game. I don't know how much we're going to be playing it. After this, I'm all yeah, for it kind of seems like it's earth. good for one playthrough. All right, I thought it was pretty fun. It was fun. Yeah, it's a lot better when you're. It goes a lot faster because we're not. What did Nick say? We're not ten. <laughs> <laughs> I right. give it a give it a nine. Good reading comprehension. I give it a nine. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty fun. Chop, chop, cheerio. <laughs> right, governor. Little sport of tea before you finish the story. <laughs> Are you a pikey? <laughs> <laughs> like dags. I like dags. <laughs> you want a caravan and get no fucking wheels on it for. 